and go. And here we are. Hey, man. Hey, hey, Tice. How are you going? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Welcome back to another episode of Nick, Tice and Videotape. Welcome, everyone. That was a little bit too Fox FM. Morning Zoo. But that's okay. It It was not bad. Yeah. 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 Just for these opening sections, maybe. Yeah. Just to kind of... Oh, you want to try and... Get a bit of excitement happening. Get the rest and snacks is the best hard wax. And a double, double, d- 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 no, we don't want to do that just yet. <laughs> no, not just yet. Hey, hey, everyone. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. You can find us on um, iTunes, Stitcher, yeah, jump, TuneIn. Jumping straight in. All that stuff. <laughs> Let's just get it done. You can find done. it everywhere. Everywhere you Facebook, can find... Facebook, Twitter. You can email us. Yeah, you can email us. We'll Nick do- Tyson videotape at gmail.com. Yep. Uh, we've the mailbag's going off. It is. It's um, great. We'll get to that later. Though. We will get to that later. But, yeah. but by all means, if you've got anything you want to say, send us an email or questions. Because um, like we're answer. getting to the point now where we actually have to vet stuff. That's true. We can't just read out everything. How good is it's that? Amazing. Maybe we'll do like a, a segment, like a, a 10, 15 minute yeah, mailbag. Yeah, like a fifteen minute mailbag <laughs> would be amazing. Um, also, um, if you do happen to subscribe to us on iTunes, which I hope all you lovely people would do. Please do. And if you have five minutes and you want to help us out, Literally by all ten. means, not even 10 seconds. 10 seconds, man. Um, it would be great if you could rate and review us. Please um, do. I want to say thank you to the people that have already done that. That's great. Um, it just kind of lifts our exposure in the iTunes uh, podcast world uh, program thing, yeah. which is already so incredibly stacked with podcasts there are bazillions of them so anything that we you know anything that helps us get a little bit more Chuck us, throw us a bone throw us a throw us a bone, bone. man <laughs> throw um, us a bone also yeah hey we had um our last episode is was has gone has gangbusters skyrocketed yeah so thank you to everyone that's downloaded and listened to our oscar extravaganza and tell your friends tell your friends man tell your friends if you like what you were what you what you're listening to exactly tell your partner go dude you should listen to this yeah and yeah. you know um our artwork looks awesome on the ipad exactly. on the <laughs> iphone app <laughs> So, if, <laughs> if for nothing else, if nothing else, you can see that and see all the cool colors. It does look awesome. Looks fucking rad. But do you get a knife? I do you get a uh, an app on on I think it Samsung comes, and everything like oh, that? Oh, so on Sam, yeah, Samsung, it's all different. Oh, you got to do different shit. You guys are different, yeah. but that's okay. That doesn't mean you're weird. No, it just that's means okay. you're different, it just and that's means fine. your phone might explode at exactly. some point. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> on to your face <laughs> while you're talking to your mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey mum, I have to go. I have to go. My ear is just melting. Um, yep. Better that. That's fine. Of course. <laughs> um, hey, let's talk trailers. Talking trailers. It feels like talking um, trailers. This is what yeah. I feel like. It could yeah. be an ad for like an RV company in like the mid, like in Bendigo. That's yeah. what I feel about oh, this. Be- okay. Or in like mid eighties. Do you know those cha- oh, those TV yeah. channels that are out in the country that? Yeah, like when it feels like the name of a show of where they talk about RVs. Like <laughs> we're talking trailers. Welcome back to Talking Trailers. No, I think it's more like a Charles in charge oh, yeah. of our days. Talking trailers. Yeah, talking trailers. Yeah, talking I feel like. trailers. How good would that be? Shanana. Exactly. At the end of it. Yeah. Yep. So uh yeah, trailer talk. Trailer talk. Tice. Yeah. I'll go first. Would you like to go first? Yeah, I'm going to just on. talk about one yeah, this week. Yeah, I've only week. got one. Yeah. Um, uh, let's talk about the new, uh, the fifth entry in the Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> franchise, shall we? Oh my God. Yes, let's bring this up. I think I've watched, I've watched something. Well, the third, I, don't know, because I this believe is it's a- the third trailer and this is the first one that's actually felt <laughs> like a trailer. Everything up to now has been very much kind of just snippets and teasery. Just going to hold stuff. you there because I'd like to paint a picture for our listeners the fact how much you're rubbing your face oh. trying to get over the fact that you've watched the <laughs> Pirates 5. How has this franchise made it to 5? This is Disney, man. This is what they do. They, they are milking it this out. cow yep. till it is just so and dry. Johnny Depp is saying yes because he owns an island and he needs to pay He needs to pay it. shit, yeah. man. He yeah. needs to pay for all kinds of, of lawyers that he's got at the moment, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Talk for another time. Yeah. But yeah, totally. Um, and look, so this is, yeah, this is the Go first one that kind of gives me a, a feel of what the movie's going to be. Okay. I'm interested only in the, to the point that Are you? Uh, the fourth one was, was kind of unenjoyable <laughs> and I, cause I like, I, I like the first three quite a lot. I'm a defender of even oh, the second three. and the third one, okay, which, I, yep. which I know gets a lot of shit. I yeah. quite, I think the trilogy works really well altogether. Okay. The first one is by far and away the best. It's a, it, I love it. Yeah, and it's that heaps theme of fun. Music? Well, oh yeah, my man, god! Even watching this trailer, when the theme kicks in, you yeah. cannot help but be like, "Fucking pirates, man!" <laughs> and you do get a little bit excited because yeah. it is—it's one of the great all-time themes. Yeah. Um, and 
Who's now? Has, so oh, sorry. this is being directed by a couple of I. Uh, a small town, yeah, small town south of Oslo in Norway. N- the Norwegian. The Norwegian. Wonderful. So they yeah they directed a film called Kontiki, set on the ocean. Is it? Does it seem strange that it's like these are the people? It's like hey, they, those guys know how to do water. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a very odd choice to do of director. Water? Yeah, they d- they direct one film, which is kind of like a, a, a seafaring you, adventure. Did you see like, Kontiki? No, I didn't. No, you I didn't. It was well, quite good. Th- that's the thing. Maybe I don't know. I think at this point, if you're doing a five, it, the the f- if you're doing a five, it is an open slather to who anyone wants to take this up because it is. Uh, look, it's a far better choice than like for the fourth one they had Rob Marshall. Yeah, who. Rob just Ma- really was such Rob a, Marshall. A, an odd choice of director. As he in like direct- Chicago Rob yeah. Marshall. Who has right. directed some good some good movies oh, in yeah, his he's day. Great, yeah. Why you would give him a huge adventure template movie. Yeah. Template? Ten pole movie. Sure. Template. Sure. It's the wrong word. Yeah. <laughs> Completely wrong word. Yeah, that that I would never understand. And okay. it, that that fourth movie was really kind of just missed the mark on a lot of different levels. Right. So but this one, you know, you never know. It's got uh, um, Javier Bardem. Yep, Javier. 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 I love him. Which love him. you know always brings a certain level of such a good bad gravitas guy. to anything. Such a good bad guy. Well, he's playing the bad guy in this, mm. and so that's interesting. Of course, you've got Jeffrey Rush churning it out again for the fifth time. Yeah, which is you, fine. He's which on is the, fine. He's on the Johnny Depp bandwagon of, of Look, just and rolling. They, they, in cash. they are backing up money. Trucks to their front door <laughs> exactly. to do these movies. Exactly. They just it's beep beep beep. Yeah. Push a little lever and <laughs> gold bars just fall just out. Just come out and they're like, "Yes, I I'll, will do I'll, this. I'll I won't look at movie. a script, but I will do this." Uh, and tell yeah. me, like, I would tell yeah. me you wouldn't. Yeah. Like, and the cl- and uh, to come back to say a nice hi there and hello because he hasn't been doing much is the is the return of uh, Orlando Bloom. Was yes, he makes an appearance in this apparently. Yeah. He he popped up in the second trailer but he's not in this third trailer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um cuz he's taken over the role as uh, of Davy Jones as Davy Jones, l- yeah. Uh, locker. He's looking after that now. Is he? I think that's what. Wasn't he didn't he have to do it for 10 years or something? To that be was honest, I only watch I've watched one about a twenty times, sure. and I've watched two and three twice. Okay, and I really I like three. Four. It's bonkers, and it like yeah. it really kind of goes off the rails a little bit. But I like it a lot more than two. Yeah, um, just because it is kind of a bit crazy, and you just you you go for it, and you're just like, man, they're just they're doing something. Yeah, and they're yeah. giving it a really yeah. good crack. I it doesn't all work. I but don't like Kira Knightley. I, I despise her. That's so that's harsh. I can't. It, no, it's, it's just truthful. <laughs> I do. I think she's horrible. Wow. Yeah, I, I, can't, I really I do. Say horrible. I would because she's the one person that ruins Love Actually for me. She oh, ruins okay. it. Ruins she does. It. Yeah. I'd With say those small lips. I'd say most of the movie ruins Love Actually, <laughs> but oh, that's okay. Really? <laughs> it's a pretty bad oh. movie. Oh, this is your knife, Tyson. Out of my oh, back. Sorry. I'll take that back now. That's Thank okay. You. All right. Story um, for a Christmas time later. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, good point. Yeah. Good point. All right. Um. Anyway, um, back to fucking old, Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, dead uh, men tell no tales. Uh, yeah. Good. Good work, title writers. <laughs> Thanks for that one. God, useless. Um. But tell, talk us through the trailer. Well, you know, there's not really much to say. It looks. It looks generically like what they've all been so far. There's a some kind of spirit pirate that is coming to hunt down Jack Sparrow for okay. some reason. Okay. Um, there's some really nice uh, de-aging of Jack Sparrow going on in the trailer because oh, okay, they show nice. him as like a teenager. Oh, and de-aging. I, I love that. It's yeah, great. Yeah. I don't know if it's actually like CGI de-aging or if they've got someone who looks just a fuck ton like, like Johnny Depp did oh, okay, in the wow, 90s. Okay, wow, yeah. Um, but it's really, it's good whatever it is that's because awesome. it's actually convinced me that it might not be CGI. Uh, so that's good work. If it is CGI, that's the best kind. So where do you land on that, Tice? Like, do you terminate a salvation, a completely CGI Arnold Schwarzenegger? Or do you like X-Men Last Stand where you get the actor like uh, Patrick Stewart and... Uh, and do you, do you oh, last CGI stand the them? technology wasn't there wasn't yet, there yet and they looked really weird and so and now odd. the newest one is probably well civil war is probably the the most uh the best example of it the moment where you see tony and, oh, he, and he flashes back yeah, to when he was really a teenager good idea. which yeah, and then you also one. have that built on from 
uh, Hank Pym in Ant Man, yes. the start of Ant Man, yeah. where Michael Douglas walks out and you're like, you're like "Fuck, Michael Douglas looks great. <laughs> he looks so like. Wow, I haven't seen him for so like for a few movies now, like because he hasn't really done much. Yeah, I yeah. actually just honestly thought, "Fuck, he's oh, really, really cleaned himself up for this." No, I know. And then you too. watch it for two minutes and you're, and like, you're like, "No, no that's the not bad him. one." I will, I will. Um, I have to mention something because this has pissed me off for years, and uh, I understand doing a CG. Uh, alteration of someone to make them older or younger. Yep. To to do it well, it, it's awesome. Sure. Oh no! What was it? It was Winter <laughs> Soldier. Winter Soldier, where they made um, Winter Soldier's uh, Cap's girlfriend, Peggy. Peggy, when she's aged, her lips are just that a second slower. I'm like, no. Why did you do that? In that oh. case, why don't you just do a decent makeup? Winona Ryder look decent, old in Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, good. There's nothing wrong with well, that. Well, so you can do good do old makeup. makeup is is good. Exactly. Bad old makeup is awful. Yeah, but like, nowadays you think that'd be okay. Like do old age makeup and then maybe some touches with CGI. Yeah, Don't maybe do the full thing. Maybe it's sometimes. Well, that's probably it. You, know, you probably need to do the touch ups. Well, I'd be interested to know if they did, what way they did do Peggy. Look at it again. It pisses me off oh, every okay, time. I it's will. the one weird hole for me in in. I reckon Winter some Soldier. people just don't look right when you oh, when age them aging. with makeup. Yeah. Regardless of how good the job is, I think some people we just we make assumptions or the makeup artists to make assumptions about how they're going to look when they're older. Yeah, yeah. But for some people it's just not right. Mm. Like you look at like um like Leonardo DiCaprio in that J. Edgar movie oh, that Clint yeah. Eastwood did. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I, it's. Not, I don't think that it's the makeup is bad. I think that it's that <laughs> the aging no one Leo. can predict what Leo is going to look like <laughs> when he's seventy, <laughs> and they've tried, and I think they've just missed the mark completely. Oh, okay. So I think some people just look just, just you can't you suit, can't tell, yeah. and so you can't. Um, you can't thing. imagine it and so the makeup doesn't really work, and, and you stand away from it and go, yeah, it just doesn't look right. And some people don't age. Yeah, Pharrell. What is he going to look like at seventy? He's not going to look. He's he'll be looking like he does today. Who? Pharrell. Like, happy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because yeah. he's old, isn't he? Yeah, he's about to turn 50, God, I that's think. that's fucking ridiculous, yeah, isn't I it? I think. I could be You're way It's full. It's because of that hat. No, it's music in your <laughs> life. If you have music <laughs> in your life... Hat. He stores the souls of, like, virgins oh up there God. and they <laughs> feed his youth. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, I don't so want to yeah. talk about it anymore. Are it's you gonna? All right, are you going to see it, Tyson? Pro- no, look, I didn't see the fourth one okay. because I heard it was balls. So right. I waited until DVD or something. Do you know what? When but it gets to this point, I, I'm going to do them all. I'm just going to do I'm going to have a sit. I'm going to get sick. I'll go have a man flu sure, and sure, just sure, chuck sure. them and just punch well, them. And I was thinking today, I was like, D- I have the trilogy and it's been a while since I've watched yeah. it. I'm like, I should watch those watch first three first again. One, oh, well, I'll skip it. the fourth one. Maybe if the reviews come out reasonable, I'll watch the fifth one, yeah, but we'll enough. see what happens. Yeah. There was nothing really except for yeah, when the score kicked in and a couple of shots here and there that look a little bit like they're trying at least to create a slightly different aesthetic than okay. the other ones had. Yeah, yeah. The other ones were all very much samey. I mean, the first three were the same director, but yeah. even whatever the fucking fourth one was called, I can't even remember. <laughs> On Stranger Tides. Oh, there Tides? he goes. On Stranger Tides, yeah. On Stranger Tides. That just looked like someone trying to do the first three. At least this one has an aesthetic oh, okay. kind of quality that's a little different, but we'll see what happens. We'll man. see what happens. Okay. See what happens. What do you say? Uh, what trailer did you My see? trailer that I watched because there was... Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> nice gap in the uh, conversation. Because there were things like Guardians and, and Dead, Deadpool uh, that came out. And we're not going to talk about them. We're going to talk about other things. We're going to talk about Pirates. And then I watched one called Catfight. No. See, there you go. Yeah, I haven't it looked really random. So, uh, oh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce his name. I'm going to say Honor Tikel. He's the writer and director. First, first time writer sure. director. Um, we should probably look into these. We should look we into these. We should do it. more homework, people, <laughs> and we will email us and tell us off if you like. Um, and provide phonetic spelling of exactly. these names when you yell at us would be great. So yeah, so the uh, it's about two people, two, two two women who went to uni together. One is a struggling artist, and the other has uh, she's sort of a trophy wife. Well, she gets told that she's a trophy wife in in the in their trailer and it's that um watching someone you went to uni with 
succeed way beyond what you've ever could accomplish. Sure. And uh, and jealousy just hits. And they're in the bathroom at one point at this. They meet at a party, right? Okay. Can um, I interrupt for a second? Go for it. Where, where is, where is the country of origin? Oh, of this, this, is, this is in uh, New York. Uh, it's in, an American in, film? In, in American film. Okay. Yeah, American film. It, it stars um, Sandra O oh, and Hesh. Huh. Huh. Anne Hesh, yeah, that's right. I said it. All right. Yeah, exactly. And Alicia Silverstone. Get out of town. There you go. Fuck yeah. So this is a, come, a comeback for some. But yeah, so uh, Sandra O oh is the trophy wife and Anne Hesh is the um, struggling artist. And they meet in the bathroom and then they're just having a bickering, having an argument. And then Sandra O oh just lands this fucking punch out of nowhere into Anne Hesh's face. And no, it, that's it. It's on for young and old. These women are breaking oh, their faces, all right. in, like it's in, in this bathroom. So what happens then? Called in catfight. The, catfight. Yeah. So what happens then in the trailer is Sandra O oh wakes up from a coma that she's been in for two years. She's lost all her money, oh. everything. She has to get a job. As she was put in a coma. She was put in a coma in the fight. for the from the. I'm guessing. I'm okay, guessing. Sure. I'm pretty sure. Well, that's what the trailer is, made. Is made this it look a like. comedy? It's a black comedy. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then while she's been uh, in the coma, Anne Hesh, her art has taken off and she is on the cover of Time magazine. So she right. sees uh, what's happened and she's she's mortified as you would be. Goes out to her... Um, <laughs> this is all in the trailer. It's so funny. So she goes it's out... It's a very informative trailer. I know. It's so good. It looks it looked really like good. I feel like I've seen it oh, sorry. already. But yeah, she goes out to her art exhibition and then uh, Sandra O oh lands a punch in Anne Hesh's face, puts Anne Hesh in a coma. <laughs> no. Are I'm you not, serious? No, I'm serious. <laughs> lands her into a coma and she has to uh, recuperate her motor functions. She loses her art. Um, Alicia Silverstone, who, is, who plays Anne Hesh's uh, girlfriend or partner, if you wish, um, leaves her. And um, yeah, they're both they both hit rock bottom, and they kind of build up. It's look, it's it looks funny. It looks like <laughs> something that's different, you know. This is it looks bizarre, wild trailer. I'm in, I'm it in. sounds like yeah, yeah um, you've got me. Yeah, you've see, got there me you intrigued. go, there you go. And I that's always what I like. want. I always need some. I need a third coma for this to really <laughs> work for me. <laughs> no, but that's the thing. I think they the rules of comedy, man. Yeah, you need a three. Ki- you, you, you need. need a, I need the three beat. You need the three beat. Yeah, but that's the thing. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do uh, Guardians or Deadpool. I want to do something that no one is going to look at because sure. of Anne Hesh. You know, no one's going to look at Anne Hesh and and. You know, Alicia Silverstone. So, what is who's Alicia Silverstone playing? She's playing the partner of Anne Hesh. All right, cool. So, yeah. So, okay. Yeah, there you go. It looks awesome. Check it out. Will I see it? I'll I'll probably I'll give it a I'll give it a um a stream. I'll definitely stream it. <laughs> is that a thing? Yeah. Do people stream yeah. things? <laughs> if it if it turns up on do one of my st- already paid for services, do people still take bike rides nowadays? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not really exactly high praise when you just say, "Oh yeah, look if if something that I already pay for happens to let me watch it for free, then I'll watch it." Well, I'm not going to go out. Look, Blockbuster know, doesn't man. exist anymore. No, it's a good point. You know actually. what I mean? If Blockbuster did exist, in my five exist, for five dollar deal, exactly. it might have been the fifth one. No, but if if it was two new releases for seven dollars, it would be my other it new release. Be, it might you be know, the second one. I will, like, oh, I'll yeah, get I'll out Logan, and then I'll get out. Yeah, you know, good call. Yeah, good call. Moving on. Interesting. I'm going to have to go watch that trailer. There you go. Um, all right. Well. What did you watch? What did we watch this week? Let's this move week. on. Hey, uh, week, Trailer Talk, by the way. We're still waiting for... I, I like talking trailers. I like talking trailers. I like that. But see, I, really I came do. up with that. I want I want other people to come up with yeah, stuff. And it, but it, talking trailers makes me go, everybody's talking. <laughs> that should... Actually, that could be the thing. I'm going to take the little... Uh, it'll saying. be... Everybody's talking <laughs> trailers. <laughs> I can hear a word they're saying. <laughs> I love that right, Australian. I love done. that Australian trailers. 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 Um, yeah. So I didn't. I don't need any of yours help. We, uh, anybody we, else? We moved on. Mine's better than all of yours. We're gonna ride it ourselves. <laughs> you can all get stuff. Oh, that's funny. So, uh, all right, I, what did you watch this week? I actually, Tice, this is the first, and it, it's 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 gonna it's original. I didn't watch anything. Oh no. Yeah, I didn't. You've betrayed. I, didn't. I know. The I, haven't podcast be- I haven't betrayed anything. Gods. I've been a bit busy buying. I understand. Uh, Going pram shopping. Well, I was about to say, full disclosure, I think, I don't know if we've told the podcast that you're an expected father. I, I think I've said something about my son. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, I am going to be a father in July. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. of course, 
Mm. Shit gets real. It does get very real. And soon enough, ladies and gentlemen, listeners of Nick Tyson videotape, you're going to hear a little kid wander around yeah. going, hey, Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop fucking around. <gasps> I shit my pants again. Oh, my God. My kid does not sound like that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making a guess. It's yeah. an educated guess. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, God. Well, Tyson, what did you watch this oh, week? Because you know I think you watched something. I did watch nice. something. Go um, for it. Uh, so I got to see Logan. You I went and saw Logan. Um, anyone that follows us on Facebook got a little early sneak peek so, of my reaction to Logan. So many people have, have, have messaged in and said, because of Tyson's... Logan, <laughs> Logan thing. I went and saw Logan. Good, Bastards. That's amazing. I know. And you know what? Logan oh, is the eight ball. pretty spectacular. Yeah. Um, Talk to me. Well, uh, there's no. I don't want to spoil it. Yep. There are things in it that didn't 100 percent work for me. Right. But oh, the that's film good. on a whole. Yep. More than it makes up for any of those small quibbles okay. that I had. Okay. Um. So just to jump back a little bit, sorry to interrupt, but just to jump back a little bit, how was sure. the how was the bad guy Tice? Uh, well, so this is interesting because we it. had this conversation last week about yeah. the the villain problems. Thanks to Mark um, Clifford, yeah, go for it. And it's funny because over the course of the film, there are three Ooh. kind of different uh, ongoing antagonists. And they kind of show themselves in different ways. And so Boyd Holbrook, who plays uh, a character's name that I'll never remember, um, <laughs> is would he's not really even a main the main, main villain. Bad? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't without you know we're not giving it away. No, no. Um, and I would say the the movie's goal isn't dependent oh, on the villain okay, itself. Good. It's not a. It's not a. Um, that really isn't even on its mind. Mm. Um, this is a this is a movie that is trying to do very different things than lots of our other comic book movies. It's trying really hard to uh, reflect on Logan himself and the the choices he is making. It's okay. not a, it's not about the you know well, he's got this new foe he has to face. It's yeah. very much about. Him mm. coming to terms with who he is now as yeah. an old man, yep. um, and his responsibilities, I guess, yeah. as someone Fair who enough. has mutant powers. Yeah, um, I think it, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's how they deal with some of these things and the way it reflects on. Uh, it's 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 an interesting. It's got a very interesting take on. I think uh, the 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 idea of moving on from past uh, mistakes, uh-huh. I guess. Yeah. Um, the the movie is, is trying really hard to kind of, to shine a light on that idea of, um, you know, reconciling with your own demons, demons yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, and I think it says it in a really kind of uh, – a poignant way for a comic book movie. Okay. You go into it thinking it's going to be just a comic book movie fun. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I had emotional reactions in this movie that nice. I haven't had in like all year so far. Like awesome. the, I was the most, yeah, easily the most emotional I got in a film this year so far. Okay. Um, It's so violent. Awesome. <laughs> like it blew my mind. <laughs> like within 10 minutes, there are limbs just gone. Exactly. And they have given the audience oh finally what they wanted. Oh, my God. Schnickety schnick. Really? Oh, oh good. It's so huge. Is it, is it a... Two questions. Yes. Is it is it different from a comic book movie? Is it an adult comic book film? Yes, it's very different from a comic book movie. It feels a lot more like a uh, kind of... Uh, because it it sounds it feels like it's set all in the I can't remember specifically where it was set. They had mm. to travel to a certain place, but it has a very Midwest American kind of vibe to it. Yeah, very kind of, uh, and because it's it's not necessarily post apocalyptic, but because it's set in these kind of desert towns and there's there's not a lot of places there mm. that are in you know in great, uh, you know. Well, most of it's in disrepair and kind of, uh-huh. you know, hitting the skids a little bit. Okay. So, it feels a little post apocalyptic Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, it feels more like a movie 
along that line, like an adult kind of sci-fi-ish, okay. than a comic book movie. It well, it feels... sounds like you're, you're, it's, it sounds like it's hitting adult themes as well. What Super, you've said. yeah, a hundred percent. It's really kind of, it's, it's ambition is far more than something like Apocalypse, for, for instance, yeah. which was, I think, really, its only ambition was to have a, a, a campy, CG a battle. big campy, like, <laughs> cartoon bag yeah, fun yeah, like yeah. um where this is yeah the ambitions are completely different mm. the, the 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 end goal of this is so much more than just oh we're gonna sh- we're gonna you know hugh's gonna send logan off with a big bang yeah you know because you know we all know it's hugh jackman's last, last time one. playing yeah. wolverine yeah. it's got so much more going on than just letting him have a great time have for his be, last yeah. one it's yeah. really trying to say some Say some serious stuff. Okay. And that's, you know, that's great, man. Like, yeah. That, Cause you know, this is, it's movies like this and I, I, you know, I am giving it a good rap. It's not perfect. And it's not yeah. like, it's not like the greatest fucking thing ever. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just a really, really good movie. And the kind of movies that I am happier to then take to someone that isn't a comic book movie fan that rags on them and it's kind of like the state of comic book movies it's ruining cinema this is the kind of movie you can take to them and say you know what this is this is what we're trying to do yeah okay they're setting the groundwork with these super consumer friendly ones yeah but we're in a position now because they were so successful we get to have some of these we get to have this kind as well and this is it feels like something like the road or, oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah. and so for that, it's it's really pretty solid. Awesome. So um, my second question, yep. just quickly. Sure. Was the ending satisfying? Tyson? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, really satisfying. Yeah. Great, yeah. great, awesome. great conclusion to yeah. the story. The third act is probably the weakest okay. of the movie. Yeah, but it's still but handled okay. exceptionally still, well. I think. Good. Yeah. Okay. The the for me it was the the middle act was far and away the, the best part of the film for yeah. me there was there's a very distinctive turning point mm-hmm. when a character is introduced that for me kind of broke me out a little bit and i was okay. like oh i don't know you, yeah you might have lost me a little bit <laughs> but they managed to steer Save it on the right yeah. but there's a yeah that and that this is like it's a long movie we're talking like two hours 20 minutes wow uh so at about oh, the I mean, 75 I 80 minute mark movie. i was just like this is the this is the this, book. I was yeah. loving every second of it, yeah. Um, and it, yeah, look, I don't want to talk too much about no, it because right, you've got to go. Right. You've got to go see it because oh, we're no, going to talk about fine. it again we when are, you go we see are. it. Yeah, that's true. Um, other than right, saying, then. go see it. It's great. You get to hear Xavier swear, which is the best thing in the oh world. Oh my god! Um, yeah, and he's wow. he's filthy. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Xavier's character, like Xavier, is awesome in this. Yeah. It is the best example of Professor of Professor X I think we've seen. It's yeah. he's just he's 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 wonderful because yeah. he's so old and grumpy, but he still has this very wise, yeah, and, yeah, the, the the wisdom that age brings. Yeah, um, in most people, not all people, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah, and well worth it. Well, cool. well worth seeing. Sitting I'm the two in. and a bit hours, and it yeah. flies by. Absolutely flies by. I couldn't yeah. believe how lo- how long it was when I looked it up afterwards. Really? It didn't feel like it at all. Cool. Um, yeah. So there we big go. Big thumbs up to Logan from Tice. Big yeah. thumbs up. <sighs> all right. Anyway, so anyway. yeah, our um, main attraction for today is from Dust from Dust till Dawn. Nineteen ninety six. Dust till Dawn. From Dust till Dawn. Um. This was a. This was. How long has it been since you've watched this, Nick? Um, it would have to be. I would have watched this probably 2010 or 2011 was the last okay. time I watched it. Yeah. I'm. It's funny because I. Go on. So on my IMDb, mm. in order to keep track of films that I've watched, I tend to give it ratings rating. and like add it to watch lists and stuff. Yeah. At the end of the film, I went to IMDb fully expecting to have to rate it, and, you and I had rated already rated it. it, and I was like. Oh, you had already rated it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, right. Well, that means I've watched it in within the last three or four years. Oh wow. No memory of that whatsoever. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I've only just started rating on IMDb, so I sure. know what it is. Yeah. Well, that's it. I, yeah. I, I think it's been about four years. Wow. But you know, it's it's there interesting because it's one of those movies that I obviously put on one night. Maybe had a couple of drinks and yep. you know stuff, and I was like, yeah, Dust Till Dawn. Dust Fuck yeah, Dawn. love it. <laughs> watched it, had a great time, went to bed, never thought about it. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well. Uh, directed by by Robert Rodriguez. Yes. Written the screenplay by Quentin Tarantino. Yes. But the story isn't by him. It's by no. um, 
What uh, was his name? Robert Kurtzman. Robert Kurtzman. That's uh, right. Makeup extraordinaire. Makeup yeah. and special makeup effects that's right, extraordinaire. That's right. So would you like to give the people, if you haven't seen From Dust to Dawn, would you like to give them a quick synopsis? Of yeah, what sure. Well, it's a bit of a fucking... Because... It's a bit of a... It's an interesting kind of attempt to, is, to merge uh, two films in a one, I feel. Like, it's, it's a film where you have one half, which is kind of your gritty crime drama. Yep. Which... But is it's very, uh, it's very nineties. It's very in the in the very, wake of Pulp Fiction. It's, it's got that Quentin, very Quentin Tarantino Quentin vibe, vibe and of it. course yep. he wrote it, so it's exactly. allowed to have that vibe. Yep. But it's still, even having said that, that kind of movie mm. was all about the all through the nineties. Once Pulp Fiction came out, oh, it was yeah, like everyone, everyone was had trying to do a kind of funny, kind of like a movie that jumped black back, comedy, back and crime. forth and, yeah, and forward and exactly. back and yeah. So you know, it felt it feels very '90s, but it's you know it's effective as a crime drama. It's kind of introducing very, you know, charismatic characters, and yeah. we're we're definitely in, interested. Mm-hmm. And then at pretty much exactly the halfway point, it yeah. just takes a fucking left turn, and we are in vampire uh, grindhouse territory. Yeah, yeah. exploitation, um, almost. full exploitation vampire yeah. movie, yeah. and <laughs> and that takes us to the end of the film. Yeah, so it's definitely. I mean, I assume it's not a surprise to anyone anymore that no. this is what that movie is is is. Well, I don't. Yeah. Well, I went when I uh, rewatched it in 2011. I, I, Sam, my wife, was watching it for the first time. Sure. And I love getting the reaction from this because how many movies do do this switch? They literally, it's two separate films that they've almost merged together. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. The other one, the the other is one there, I always go to is Predator. Predator, I think, is pretty close to that. Oh, Predator yeah, for the first kind of for the first maybe half an hour. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for that first shot of the alien ship landing, yep. Which is the which even that is kind of vague. You just see it could be you, it, it makes you assume. Okay, yep. So it's kind of when everyone dies and it's just him and him and the Predator. No, no, because is that what you're thinking after of? that whole first raid, so yeah. them getting there. Yep. The first big raid, mm-hmm. then one of them, you know, they find the bodies, all that stuff. Yeah. The for up to the first appearance of the predator. Yeah. We're talking like thirty something minutes. Yeah, that's in that true. Movie. It's just a bit of an action. It f- so it, if you didn't know that predator was about a team of mercenaries taking on an alien. Yeah. That would be a pretty sharp left turn if you were watching that yeah, film, and all of a sudden true. it's like, what? What is this what fucking is, heat vision? <laughs> thing that what's I'm... Going on? What's, what's going on? Why is the camera still changing? Yeah, yeah. that's a good so point. So that's, yeah. that's the other one I kind of turn to. There are, like, I'm sure there's quite a few others, but that's always the one that I've turned yeah. to as a, a kind that's of very, similar example of this. I'd love to hear another one. If you do know of another one, listeners, t- I couldn't look at it. Yeah, I don't tweet know. at us. Yeah, please. Uh, it, there'd, there'd be a way to Google it. Mm, probably. Yeah. yeah. So um, what was your first impression, Tice? Do you want my first impression? I want your first. I want from a, back in the day. Back in the day. Back yeah. in the day, this I fucking loved it was this the bomb, movie. Wasn't yeah, it? it's yeah. it was just everything you you could want as as a 14, 15 year old. I probably yeah, was when I, I watched it, was, it for yeah, the first 15, time. Yeah, I thought it was um, incredible. Yeah, it really, really great. Yeah. I don't know if I still agree. Yeah, I'm kind of on the same same page. So when when I watched it working back at the video store like we did, not that we worked at the same video store, but no. when I did, I brought it home and, it, and me and my brother watched it and it was amazing and we loved it and, and yeah, but now re-watching it, because I'm coming at it obviously from a different point of view, I I go along for the ride, it's great, it's fine. It is. It is definitely a ride film. You just yeah. kind of get on. But the thing is, but the thing is... Uh, uh, because of the ending, there's an element of, of disappointment for me. So when the switch happens, I'm kind of like, oh, I, okay. I, I, I Because I'm so enthralled with that first half, that first hour of that movie, these characters, what's going to happen? Is he going to let him go? Is he not going to let him go? You know, it's such a, is he going to, sorry, is he going to let the family go? Is he not going to let the family go? Like, well, see, this oh. is, this is interesting because oh. I think as a teenager, yeah, I think... It was the second half of the movie that I was most drawn to. Exactly. But now, but as, now you as an adult, see, yeah. I find the first half to be leaps and bounds better yeah. than the second half oh, of this yeah. movie. 
I think it is a lot of fun what happens once they get to the old titty twister. Oh yeah, like it I'm is. Not it's, it's not fun. It's, and it's I definitely enjoy it. fun. You go for the ride, but but there are if you want to pick any kind of faults in this film, yeah. generally they're all found in the second half. I feel like yeah, the first half absolutely is tight as a drum. Yeah, it's and bang on. It's, it's just awesome. It, it's yeah, yeah, it's really it's really great. Yeah, and I I don't feel like. I don't think it's like a clear distinction between the two filmmakers. I don't, you know. I've heard some people say that, yeah, but, but I, you know, I don't each, think so either. If you had to distinguish them, you you would say the first half feels Tarantino, the second yeah. half feels Rodriguez. Right. That's fine. But sure. they both worked on equal parts of this film. I think this to me feels like, even though Kurtzman obviously came up with the story and developed it quite a bit apparently, yep. this to me feels like what eventually became... Grindhouse, mm. exactly. Where it's both their separate films, their influences, yeah. and what they want out of that exploitation kind of genre cinema. Right. Except in this case, they've mushed it together like a like they've just chucked it in into a sandwich. Yeah. Whereas Grindhouse, they it's all, they let they let each of their own ind- individual ideas develop. Yeah. Because exactly. you think like I think the second half of this feels a lot like Planet Terror to me. Oh yeah. Like. And it has that likewise, flavor. It has that flavor. The first to it. half feels very death proof. Death proof, yeah. Especially the bar scene of death proof. Death proof for me. Yeah, that's true. Kind of goes off the rails after that first kill. I don't really like much of it. It depends past on what, that what version one. you watch. Because well, if you watched Quentin's cut, like the, the shorter the, cut, the shorter cut yeah. I prefer that version of of both films actually. Yeah. Oh, look, they're yeah. both better as shorter cuts. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I still, yeah. I still, I, I think. Death Proof, yeah, it's a, it's a different conversation, but Death Proof doesn't entirely work for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. So you have these, yeah, you have these kind of fighting ideologies of where this film should go. Mm. And as a viewer, I feel like I feel like there would be people in the other boat as well. There are people that are like, hey, I'm getting no, the fucking vampires. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. But it's funny because you're making, you're making a film that is so clearly of halves. <laughs> That we have no choice but to say, I like one half better than the other. Yep. So you kind That's of, very true. it's almost like you're, everyone would prefer one half yeah, over than the, other. the other. You would yeah. still like it. Like I said, I still like it. Love Don't get film. me wrong. Exactly. I still have a really good time watching it. Exactly. It's a bit crazy. Um, it's got some really. Go on. It's got some of Tarantino's like pristine dialogue. Yeah. It's also got some real ripper, like awful ones. Some of his worst, I think. Oh, Some of his worst on. dialogue. What are you? Are you talking? You know, well, this is where the halves kind of come into it, and maybe we'll get into this. Well, he later wrote the whole. The, he wrote the whole screenplay. So yeah, but the, yeah. I mean, there's I obviously writes, influence, and he's ch- he changes the style when he exactly. gets to that. Halfway it turns point. into it turns. It's not that. It's not anything in the halfway point that kills it for me. There is there's. Really? Well, see, I there's some things so that up, I find up to that halfway point. It's all it, the com- it's all dialogue gold. You have nothing. There's some there lovely that, stuff yeah. going on. There is a horrible line when is there? when he opens the door and he says, uh, "What is this?" and he punches him. Oh, and it's says, a punch. It's yeah, a punch. That's true. That's it a could bad be line. his worst line ever. That's true. I'm like I I because he's he's very good. Tarantino is excellent at dialogue. Exactly. That to me. It my, could be his worst. My life. favorite scene. Oh no! I don't want to jump. I don't want to jump. Keep going. But I, I also really like his the way he gives Clooney's character very unique speaking style. Yes, he's got some really interesting yeah. um, turns of phrase. Mm. I, like at one point, he refers to himself as a rough pecker. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, what a really interesting choice of words. I love it. When he's like, I know I've been kind of a rough pecker. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, Who that's, that's fine. Comes but he also yeah. does this thing. Did you notice the the? He does this three times. Yep. He says he calls them. He says to them, "Okay, ramblers, let's get rambling. Let's get rambling. Yep. Okay, hard drinkers, let's, let's drink, drink hard. hard. And yep. then the best one. Is All right, vampire killers, let's kill let's some fucking vampires. vampires. Oh wow, I didn't notice that. So he has this little kind of yeah, which. You know, but that's the thing. I he wonder writes if the, the character. It, it must so be well, deliberate. It has know? to be of deliberate. Of course it is. Of course um, it is. But it's and funny. It only works with the third one, though. The third one that calls kill back some to those f- when, when he goes, "All right, vampire killers, let's kill some fucking vampires." I actually vampires. like. It makes me want to drink when he says, "Okay, hard drinkers, let's drink hard." I'm buying. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, let's have a fucking drink. He's good you know? at that. Yeah. Let's take a moment. Go Clooney on. is fucking well, amazing. Well, this is this is what this I want film. to talk about. So, so the start that opening scene at Crazy Pete's, right, 
is... It's it, the dialogue between the shop guy who is John Hawkes, by the way. I didn't even. Oh, totally he look, didn't, doesn't he look so young? So young, so young. But he, he wouldn't have Acad- been that young. Though. Academy nominated Dom yeah. John Hawkes. Yeah. He would have been like in his thirties, but he looks really young he and does. like he a looks surfer like a teenager. dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I love that photo they use of him oh, in the, when it. he's it's holding so up the good. giant yeah. fish on the roof. <laughs> it's so good, so good. It's like that's what I want my mugshot to Your be mu- when oh, it's like when I when you pass. That's horrible. No, pass. we're not doing that. I want it we're to be me that. just like drunk off my ass <laughs> holding a giant fish. But yeah, so uh, is it Crazy Pete? I think it's Crazy Pete. So it's the the shop guy, and then the sheriff, obviously Michael Parks. Michael Parks, which is amazing. Well, I don't, I don't. For, for Michael Parks, I only really know him as from these Michael roles. Parks Tarantino yeah. and Red State. Yeah. Exactly. Which he's the, he's great in Red State. He's, oh, he's really awesome. He's I terrifying that in that. I but love then. That movie. Well, see, uh, not a lot of people do, and I think it's no, quite not good. a lot of people I, know about it. I, I really feel. liked it. Um, anyway, anyway, so yeah, it's funny because he's like this legend, but I'm like he's a legend because because of Tarantino, because of Tarantino <laughs> for me. Yeah. So I've probably it's probably one of those guys that I should go back and watch Look some of his, his older stuff because yeah. he's he's always good. Like yeah, he always. always brings and versatile man. Yeah. In Kill Bill, when he plays the the Mexican who cuts the prostitutes, Jesus, Kill Bill Two, Volume Two. Oh, yeah. You lost don't remember? Me. Oh, you at the start, at the very start, where's Bill? And he goes, This Bill. And he's smoking. Yes. Oh, amazing. I'm with you. Anyway, right. so yeah, so that, that start dialogue between them, it's Quentin, but it's it's inconsequential for me. But then George appears, and and this is where the movie starts. Yeah. Like, because of his, del- it's hand in hand. I was watching it. So, because of George's delivery and because of Quentin's script, he's so watchable charismatic strong this this character like this is my favorite this is my favorite Clooney uh role yeah absolutely I, 100% my favorite Clooney role like it is it is that good and he holds that character throughout the entire film like he doesn't waver no i love that they he he remains a a prick exactly basically for All the whole the way movie throughout. it's 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 a really exactly. great and you know, these these it's these kind of things that we don't. I don't ever. Um, I never fear when I watch a Tarantino film. Yeah. That there will be these kind of audience pandering elements. Like yeah. he he will never do that. He will never take a character no. and betray their their character just to pander to an audience. Exactly. I just know he will never do that. Yeah. So you watch a movie like this and you see this character and you're like, wow, he's going to be a badass. Exactly. And he will remain a badass. Yeah. He's not going to have a soft kind of turn, change of heart or anything. Exactly. You know. So good. Um, so he, good. But yeah, that start, you were saying that 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 the way that he delivers those lines. He's, like it and just, it amazes me that he has not, he hasn't done another Tarantino movie. No, he hasn't, no. It He's because he's wrapped up in. Oh look, cons. I get it. He's a very he's a very popular you know actor. Yeah. He does a lot of stuff. But mm. for me, if I was Tarantino, he has a way with his dialogue. Yeah. Like he really has a way with his dialogue. Yeah. Whether or not that's just because Tarantino is excellent at writing dialogue, or but there are certain people that just have a flair for it. Yeah. As well. But Clooney in a western. Like, Quentin's still stuck on this Western thing, but, which is fine. I, I love it. But it, it blows but my mind that he hasn't brought him back for it. Or he's probably, for he, maybe he's asked him and he's, yeah, and he's turned him exactly, down. But, yeah. I, you know, for me, he's, mm. it's one of the, he has a way with Tarantino dialogue that I think even other actors that are becoming kind of Tarantino regulars yeah. don't have. Yeah. Like, that aren't as, like, Christoph Waltz, I think, is excellent at what <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, I was going to say, but yeah. The, Clooney just has this color in it and this mm. real interesting, like, so good. even though you know the words that he's about to say, he still finds ways to say them unexpectedly. Yeah, yeah. And they feel really kind of like poetic and they have like this rhythm to them. And yeah. he's just doing an excellent job. So good. He is immediately uh, charming, though, as well. Yeah. You like him. You you can't you help like but him. like him. Yeah. Um, also, and I was, I was making when I was thinking, um, watching that first scene, yeah, he actually does something clever. He makes the sheriff awful to begin yeah, he makes with, an, uh, yeah. which is already a really clever step because then whoever we meet next, if we find them charming, we will That's like true. them more. I didn't think of that. 
because he's true. awful. Because he's an awful guy who's about, picking um, on. He uses the word mongoloids. That's right. He's picking awful. on someone mentally disabled, yeah. and it's just awful. Yeah. And so he's he's obviously it's a very deliberate choice. It mm. puts you know the law yeah. on our bad side and yeah. makes these criminals who are just genuinely like he says. <laughs> he says some really fucking awful stuff to yeah. George Clooney. Yeah, but for some reason. He's. We just forgive it. Who is this? What are you talking about? The George sheriff. Clooney. No, George Clooney. We forgive some of the awful oh, things that yeah. he says. He says some just, awful stuff because but, he's but, just so good. But because he's so charismatic, he's yeah. nice. You know, he's lovely. You know, and that neck tattoo, man. That's the raddest thing. Oh, ever. Tice. I think it's aged a bit, buddy. No, it still it looks has, badass. I love it. I'll, li- oh, sorry, I'll give you the neck, the neck part of it, but the oh, sleeve. The, no, but you only see the sleeve once, at so the it's end. fine. Oh, Tice. Right, it's it a tri- it's the neck. tribal tat that everyone now has, and if you have one, your 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 True. tribe is douche. True. You're, you're too a tribe it, it doesn't of often. It doesn't often do the crawl oh. up on the neck. That's the cool bit. These guys who have those tats now, I feel so sorry for them. <laughs> I really do. No, man, because now I they can really just go back do. and say, oh, yeah, it was because of From Dust Till Dawn. That's what I had it. Oh, yeah, right. Um, well, one of my favourite lines, just before we jump off Clooney's character, yeah. my favourite lines that he delivers, and he delivers it so well, is the, is the, um, the hotel clerk. Ding! Oh, uh, yeah. Ding! What do you want? What yeah. do you think I want? You... <laughs> What the hell do you want? He goes, what do you think? I want your mean old bass. I want a fucking room. <laughs> I love it. Well, because he's, he's got a real knack for comedy too. He is. And oh, he's funny. I mean, you think oh, about this period thou, of, man. well, Jesus. I mean, that's where, that's Jesus. the extreme, obviously. Yeah. But he had a little run with the Coens where he did a few of their kind of, Oh, yeah, he was um, in Intolerable Cruelty. Intolerable Cruelty, yeah. and he does that well. He does that, yeah, uh, he did that kind of shtick in Leatherheads where it was really kind of... He was kind of funny in, in um, uh, Out of Sight as well. He was well, see, this is, one of, yeah. this is peak Clooney for me because yeah. this is Out of Sight is, I think, Amazing. still his best work, I would wow. I would say. and But this is, we're talking the same, I think the same year. Yeah, really? Um, Jesus. So, like, to have a year like that. Yeah. Like, yeah so What good. I wouldn't, yeah. Well, it was ninety eight actually, so it was a couple of years oh, okay. later. But, but still, he's so he was on a he was on a streak, man. And he has people were realizing that he has because uh, you've got Elmore Leonard who is amazing for Out of Sight, who I yeah. think adapted the screenplay for it as well. Let me just double check oh, that. Wow. Uh, no, Scott Frank, who I love, Scott Frank. Yeah. Um, mm. Another another writer with an incredible flair for dialogue. Yep. And so you've got George Clooney doing this very specific kind of he's filling this gap for the charismatic guy who is a bad guy but also sexy and so good can also charm the pants off you yeah yeah and exactly they're kind of extremes because in this case he's like a real like a real rough rough scumbag he but is still you love him yeah out of sight he's a much more suave yeah, kind he's of he's the class it's a bit more danny ocean than, exactly than, than seth gecko yeah um but it takes a certain kind of actor to pull that off. Mm. There's not many that can do that. That can do both. That's true. And I love a bad guy. I love people who are versatile play the bad guy. Tom Hanks, play a bad guy, man. Um, Apart from Road to Perdition and Lady Killers, that's it. Yeah. I li- I really like him in Road to Who Perdition. Who doesn't like Road to Perdition? Okay. So I'm going to turn the conversation onto Quentin. Okay. Okay. Sure. I have I and this is where unfortunately I have I have a little bit of beef. Okay. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I love I love a Quentin Tarantino a film. That's okay. I think I know you where know. you're going with this. Um but that's this is the thing. He's so trying to go into what I wanted to say. I was like, "Well, I can't I can't pick on him." Because this is the this is the one exception for me. This film because I don't like Quentin's acting. I don't I don't like no. it. I've never liked it. Um, but this is the one thing. But Quentin has become, and I wanted to bring this up. Quentin has become a brand. Sure. Quentin Tarantino. Name another director, Tice, that you that brings out a film and you go. In, doesn't matter who's in it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go see that movie. Apart from maybe Cohen's. Maybe Cohen's. He is, yeah. he is, and this is, this is from you and me who, who are major, major film buffs, you know. Yeah. He's, look, he's, he's probably the most prolific of that. Mm. There's a few more, like I'll, I'll, I'll always see a Scorsese film. Okay. Regardless. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we're talking about. Spielberg, but I've skipped. Like, yeah. I see, there watch, you I go. I didn't watch BFG. There you go. Um, did you see, did you see. Christopher Spy- Nolan. Spies of the Bridge. 
Spies and Spies. Bridge of Spies. Bridge no, of I didn't spies. see Bridge of Spies. See, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Um, see, well, you know, Nolan, 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 maybe. Yeah, Nolan's Nolan up definitely. there. Yeah. But this is this is coming from us, you see. So the people that, you know, maybe go to the cinema, they're not going to jump out and they're going to see something that's really advertised. Well, they're going to go see Logan because our boy Hugh Jackman's in it and it's a it's a it's going to be fun and it's superhero. Sure. People, you know, other than that, people are going to go, "Are you going to go see the new QT movie?" You know. He's one of, of the only, he's, he, yeah, it's it's he's one of the only directors that we refer to by name as do you want to see the new, new Quentin, Quentin Tarantino? Tarantino. Yeah, which is exactly. that's great, man. Oh, like, it's amazing! Uh, like, it's amazing that he's. We hit that. I think we kind of bought, we kind of touched on this a couple of weeks ago, maybe. Oh, did we? When we were talking about like, do we have rock star directors anymore? Yeah, and he's that's definitely and the he's kind of the, the last the remaining one, yeah, one where exactly. it's like, he's his reputation precedes the film. Like we f- we find out about a, ca- a Tarantino film before we even know a title, before yeah, we know who's in that's it. That's true. We just know it's a Tarantino, Tarantino film, film and it's kind of yep. about this. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so we yeah. get excited. So, yeah, so because he's, it kind of, it gives him the exception for me. So, it, uh, but this, y- this... He's allowed to be kind of not that great. No, but that. that's that's the thing. I... Oh, I hate him in every other role. Him and no. him in Pulp Fiction. I fucking. I, can't, fucking I don't mind him in Pulp me. Fiction. He's. I think no. he's, he's. He's. He doesn't hurt it in any way for oh, me. Oh no, he, he doesn't, doesn't affect it. So he it's kind of fine. You just let him do his thing. But that's the thing. Like, wouldn't you rather give that give that opportunity to someone who's gonna like a uh, a Steve Buscemi in that in that yeah, role? Yeah, sure. But like, it's yeah, it, it's an inconsequential like a, role yeah. as well. And so, I know, it, but it, it, it's not bad enough that it. That I that I'm drawn to like, I think he's worse in, I think like his little cameo in Django is worse. Yeah, it's less screen time, less, and it's just pulling you out of the movie because. But that just pulls me out of the movie far worse. Exactly. Than the one. Well, see this era, Quentin, when '90s Quentin. This is a serious Quentin though. He hasn't become that brand. That's what I was trying to make. Yeah, point. you know I'm, he. So he's taken the role of um, oh, Richie. Gecko yeah. so seriously that the small nuances of that character are amazing. You know, he makes it. He, it's and he's it's, fuck, his, it's he's his best work. For, it's easily the best acting he's he's ever done. Ever done. But yeah, Richie Richie Gecko, he's scary. He, he does a really scary. good weird thing yeah. with him. It's good. Really it's does. effective. Um he makes him kind of childlike in yeah. a way. And you are scared of him because of you you're kind of because of uh, George Clooney and how charismatic he is in that first start scene, because he's we, we know that he's not all there, because he shoots the sheriff. We know that oh, what's well, his name you know, wasn't signaling no, the sheriff, well, and he okay. shoots him. Well, we we assume that that, but we don't have any proof of that. You think we do? There's nothing on there. No, because mate, because we don't <laughs> we don't see we don't the see angle the angle the whole time. No, come I on. I think no. If you think about it, yeah. we 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 are you are on the side of Richie. No, Gekko. no, not at all. <laughs> we are we are projecting that information. We are after we know we are, that he's yes. crazy. Yeah. If you see this for the first time, you the way he leans in yeah. and does the whisper, mm-hmm. you. Don't know anything about him. Yeah. For all you know, it's like, oh, oh maybe you maybe, did. Maybe he was. Maybe he was, maybe he was. That's true. So it puts you in this weird kind of energy with him, I think. That's true. But now watching it, you now know. Now watching it, you wasn't. know that he yeah, wasn't at all. He's a crazy. He's a fucking. But I don't think. I think what they do really well is they affect. They really clearly show that it's Seth that is kind of. The, the brains and the power oh, of, the, yeah. of the relationship. He's the like, leader. He's the he's, one that's looking after. Yeah, it's very much he's looking after him. Yeah, and that they play that kind of interestingly because it's I it's clever that. too it's that they do that because it beautiful dynamic. It is. A, it's a nice dynamic and it, it gives us. It's a way to make the audience subconsciously more a fan of George Clooney's of Seth. Yeah, without even realizing. It, exactly. I think. Yeah. You know, because we just we see. Not only do we see like a horrible thief that is willing to murder and blah 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 exactly. blah, yeah. but we also see a guy that is trying to look after his little brother, little brother, yeah. who he knows is not quite all there. Yeah, you know, and there's and that really just, that really great to... moment where he kind of breaks down after he murders the the bank teller, Which and is he's like, favorite. he's trying to ask him like, what is wrong with you? What is the? And yeah. he just kind of breaks down yeah. a little bit, and it's it's kind of yeah, it's lovely. It's my favorite scene. That scene. It's a good scene. Yeah. Do you want yeah. to? Know, uh, yeah. Let's talk about that scene because yeah. I want to talk, talk about, about that my scene? favorite scene. So well. that's that's my favorite scene in this movie. That sure. that because uh, two things. One, in this in this you see a director use um, less is more really well. Sure. 
what happened? What, what be, because of the setup and how Richie uh, coerces the hostage to come over and just just watch TV with me, just watch TV with me, you know, and then watching cartoons, and it's and it's fine and it's and it's all good. I like the you sorry don't interrupt. I really like yeah, the go. one <laughs> gag that's on the cartoon where it comes up and it flashes <laughs> on the sign for steamed hams, and it goes indoors <laughs> and it's a bunch that? of pigs in a sauna with cigars. That's hilarious. That <laughs> like, anyone that's a funny even seen gag. I haven't seen that. I feel like that. Really? It's, it's obviously some kind of old Warner Brothers thing. <laughs> but this, cause, well, whenever uh, I have this terrible habit of yeah. whenever anyone turns on a television and a need movie, to see what it I, is. I'm watching what's oh, on absolutely, the television. Absolutely. So, yes, That's why the you steamed know, hams gag got me. In uh, in Nightmare a good one to that is in Nightmare on Elm Street one, she Nancy's watching Evil Dead and in Evil Dead uh Night, Nightmare on Elm Street sometimes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they uh, yeah, there were quite a few they throwbacks did, between yeah. the two of them. Yeah. But yeah, um that scene uh, the less is more with with the violence. It makes the violence just way more. Just the okay. So when George Clooney comes back, he's got the burgers. And now he's having this is some decent dialogue between him and his brother. And then he realizes where's the hostage? The what, door shut. You know yeah. what's going on? Where is she? What is she doing in there? And then Robert Rodriguez puts the camera on him. And you see yes. the reaction of him to what has ever happened. Yeah. And there's quick flashes. I love of the quick the phone. flashes. It's and really it's clever. Just it's just beautiful. Lovely. And the phone, that quick flash of the phone, splattered in blood. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not the phone every time. No, is no, no. It? There's, there's other ones. There's other yeah, there's other ones. In there, but, but yeah, there's, it's, there's it's blood the phone. stains in every yeah, flash. And, yeah. you can, you can and it's just, and it's how calm Richie is. Not only is he calm, so in your head, after you've watched that scene, that, that first piece of dialogue. He's he's calm. He's collected. Yeah, he's, no, he's, he's got no there. blood on him. He's just sitting there. He's waiting for his brother, and that's yeah. it. And, and get some that's food. how you ha- realize. And he asks how about the percentage. He's like, "Can exactly. we get a bigger percentage?" Like, yeah. it's nothing to him. It's nothing. And yeah. this is how twisted Richie Gecko is. And well, this is yeah. why Quentin does a great job in this one role. And I wish he he does. Uh, he really yeah. does. It's beautiful. Because um, my yeah. oh, we'll talk about my favorite scene well, yeah, is um, between a character we haven't mentioned yet, Jacob the. Preacher, oh, the preacher and Seth when he's driving the RV right. and Seth is right. is drilling him for information about yeah, what's yeah. happened to his wife. Yeah. Um it's I find that that's a really great scene between these two characters that are kind of trying to wrestle the control of the situation yeah. from each other. Exactly. They see they see in each other kind of uh, I think there's there's somewhat there's not respect there it's a different but there's acknowledgement mm. of the 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 power dynamic yeah. between the two yep. that Jacob is aware that Seth has the power but he's not going to he's not going to back gonna roll down over. Yeah. yeah exactly and he makes and he just it's very subtly done yep. just in the way he answers these questions the way he doesn't want to give too much information yep. away but he will tell him what he's asking and he takes a stand he, no 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 I've yeah, told you yeah he said enough. no I've told you enough that's all you don't need to um yeah. and I just yeah I think and also you see when George Clooney is asking the questions Seth mm. uh he he loosens up a little bit, and exactly. you see him kind of. You can tell that he actually starts to kind of warm to him. Warm to if, him. If anything, yeah, then yeah. when he says, "No, I'm done. No more information." Mm. Seth like a flips okay, like a dime and yeah. says, "Look, hey, we 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 can do this. We just want to get through this together. We can. Exactly. We don't have to be on his fucking throats." Yeah. 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 So I really love it, and there's a beautiful. I think one of my favorite lines in the whole yeah. movie is that the. Um, what do you say those acts of acts of gods really stick it in and stick and, it in and break, and it, break off. it off, yeah. don't they? And I'm like, that's such a great yeah, a analogy for it. It yeah. doesn't just fuck you over; it gets in there and it breaks, breaks it off, yeah. so you, you're exactly. stuck with it. Good scene. It's really great. Really do you great. do you? Can I ask you a question then? Do you believe Clooney? Do you believe that he will let him go? Because we never see what would happen. I yes, no, I I you think believe he, him I think from he, that yeah, point. Yeah. I, I believe him. I feel like he. I feel like he I he meant it when he said it to the teller as yeah, well. Yeah. And I I feel like he he I he meant it you when meant he said it, it to these yeah. people. I b- I believe him as well. And yeah. it's and it's We haven't really spoken much about Jacob Benny's family no, yet. No, I was going to um, I was going to jump we into probably it. Probably just jump back and have yeah. a little chat about them. I do love like it's it's great to see Harvey Keitel. He's another actor that I think excels amazing. in Tarantino's work. Mm. Um I mean, I've seen he's him. Good I've in, seen he's him a good lot. In everything. But to me, I feel like he does his, his best, best work. In it's not so much his best work. I think he's just one of those actors that sings with Tarantino's words in his mouth. Yeah. I think it's just, you yeah. know, he's he's obviously a very talented actor mm. and takes it very seriously. Um, he's just he's. I think he's a little bit 
uh, he's a little bit off with the fairies in this kind of stuff. I think he's one of those actors, actors. No, I think, really yeah, I like. think he's, I've heard, I've read stories where he takes things a little too far. Yeah. Because he was meant to be, fuck, I don't know his name, in Eyes Wide Shut at the very start. He was meant to be that character uh, that dances. So at the very start in the ballroom in in, uh, in uh, Eyes Wide Shut. Uh, Tom Cruise goes off with two girls and sure. Nicole Kidman gets seduced by a man. He okay. was meant to be that man. Right. But he took his role a little bit too far ah. and, um, yeah, was... Um, was removed. Yeah. He does like removed. getting his penis out, old Harvey Keitel. That's true. He, he loves he's a big... He's a big fan of just waving in the wind. Just getting a mass cock out. Yeah, why not? Doesn't love a cock. <laughs> <laughs> Decent. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, this might be one of my favourite of his performances because yeah. I think it has I need to see more it has stuff. a little bit of a sense of humour in it he has mm. a bit of um, he's the wholesome I like him because but he's I the think wholesome. he's he's very it's clever because he's he's super aware of the film that he's in as well yeah um, and he gets to be he gets to be kind of like yeah a wholesome good guy but at the same time gets to have fun with a this ridiculous badass. material exactly um, Juliette Lewis Juliette Lewis um, n- I I have a weird kind of relationship with really? Julia Lewis. I like a lot of movies she's in. I don't really ever warm to her. Right. I love Julia Lewis. Sure. I love her. I love her band. Another one. Yeah. Okay. But unfortunately, I don't like her because she's a Scientologist. Is she? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. All right. And I know that you know I. Yeah, I'm of the opinion where you shouldn't. You shouldn't. What that pe- people's personal business is their personal business, and whether they can act. Because I like Tom Cruise. I like him as an actor. I think he's fucking insane. Me too. Um, oh, big yawn from Ty. It's a bit late for him. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I like Juliet Lewis. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I just I yeah, she just I don't warm to her when I see her in anything. Yeah, but like I like a lot of her films that she's in. Yep. She just does nothing, does nothing for, for me. For you. Like fair personally, deal. I think I like I enjoy her in something like Natural Born Killers because she's I'm allowed to feel that way about her yeah in a film like this where i think i'm meant to be endeared to her yeah i just i don't really she's quite have a lot of that she's going not, on she's playing a young character i don't think she was she wouldn't be as young as no, this but as i don't this, think no. i think it's she's meant to be about 19 or 20 yeah. in I this need to film see natural born killers again i haven't watched that since i was a teenager. well that was before this yeah and she's playing like a Bonnie and Clyde like a, just a yeah. batshit crazy chick yeah cr- character um, so look, she's very versatile because she can go from that to this yeah. where she, but yeah, it just doesn't, I don't know. No, fair you know, just someone, sometimes fair people deal. just kind of rub you the yeah, wrong way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but God, their brother is just awful. <laughs> <laughs> he is such a bad actor. Well, this it's kid. Because it's his first film. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh jeez. I do look, you know, I give everyone nah, a chance, but deal. he's, he didn't, I'm he glad didn't he do, doesn't do much. He because doesn't. Yeah. Well, he didn't do much rubbish. after this either. Well, there it you go. Just, yeah. Um, I like... But didn't you didn't didn't you like the dynamic? The fact that um, you know, in this when you when we first get introduced to them, you see the loss of faith of a preacher. This is in a very short sequence. Mm-hmm. You see the loss of faith of a preacher. You see the death of their mother, and in this short time, we are with these characters. Like they were like, oh yeah, I I love these guys. They do yeah, they do quick lovely. work. I feel like that scene is a little bit too. Uh, not Har- not Harvey Keitel. I think they make Juliet Lewis and um, what's his what's his character's name? Scott. Yeah, Scott. The kid. Yeah, yeah. Scott? Scott. Yeah, Scott and Jacob. Scott, Jacob, and, and she's she Lord. Is... Oh God. We'll anyway, suck. I feel like they make the kids especially a little bit too G shucks pup. But that's the, that's their kid. They're but they're, they don't they don't they go to Sunday school. Doesn't sound real to me. They go to Sunday school though. No? It is Scott. Um, Scott and Kate. Kate. Um, yeah, and it, it just that that scene. I like what I like what they're doing with um Harvey Keitel with Jacob. I think they're setting up his character well. Although yeah. I don't know if it was a cliche at this time or if it's since become a cliche. The whole the, pastor losing, losing his faith, faith yeah. because of the death like of a loved I one. Think, I think it works. It's a good kind of. It's a good catalyst to get us into this situation. Yeah. And when. Obviously, because we're dealing with like a, a supernatural enemy that is heavily rooted in religious symbolism, yep. Yep. we get some meaty kind of stuff with that, and that's that's great. You know, yeah. it's that's fine. Yep. Um, if you want, you know, it never hurts a vampire movie to try and 
uh, just have at least Push the, the question of element. faith yeah. uh, to to have it somehow be p- a part of the theme. Like, because yeah. it is, it's a meaty thing, and you can get your teeth into it a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Um, whether or not this needed it is is kind of irrelevant to me. I don't think I don't think they really. Pl- uh, I don't think it pays off. I think they don't do it justice. No, is, is the, the best thing that they do out of it is that he gets to bless. The, the the tap water, water yeah, basically so a exactly. water bomb and and, and a water super balloons. soaker fifty get, yeah become, super soaker become, become flamethrowers exactly basically that's probably the most effective thing and it is it really I is. just can't help but think that it was reverse engineered from that idea wow really okay like no I think the idea no. of how cool would it be if uh, like one of the characters was a priest because then we could bless, bless the all the water. water that's true like that feels like someone's good idea that then gets reverse engineered to well this the, let's make the character yeah, you know lose his all, faith and blah 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 blah. I'm going to table this topic because this is going to come back up when we do talk about the second half because sure. I do believe that there are a lot of concept ideas in the second half. Sure, 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 yeah. sure. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. Second that's, half. That's it. Yeah. I'm all, all right. good. Let's let's move on, man. All right. Okay. So I have a question. Sure. <laughs> Uh, we start with the Titty Twister bar, we which do. is one of the we most famous the bars twisters. in in cinema history. Yeah, I believe I know my answer to this question. Sure, would you? I want you to answer it. Yeah, do you think you'd get into this bar, Tyson? No, I would, not. <laughs> I would not get into this bar. Neither would I. No I would, that would want, take one look at my oh. skinny frame. Yeah. Look at my glasses. Go, dude. What the fuck what are, you are you doing, doing here? <laughs> Truckers and bikers only, man. Truck and bikers and only. Yeah, but I can't. We, Tyson's got a. T- a bike and I'm on his side cart. Yeah, Can't that's we what do it was. that? No, sorry. I have you my guys Vespa. are way too green for us. Yeah. And when you got Danny Trejo working the bar. Exactly. We're not going to get past Cheech Marine. At no, the start, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So uh, does that, it doesn't work for me anymore, that Cheech Marine bit. A Cheech Marine bit? Yeah. Well, this is the thing. So my my wife has um has only seen that. This is the second time she watched it, I sure. believe. And I asked her, as a as Sam, as as a female, what what reaction do you get from that? Yeah, you know. And she, said, oh, it's fun. It's a bit of fun. She doesn't care. She laughed. Sure. I was like, okay, really? I think I laughed at one point, and I might have even, as like a sixteen year old boy, like quoted it and thought oh, I was yeah. being really funny. Yeah, but it's not funny. As so a sixteen year old, I'm just, I'm just kind funny. of like, oh, okay. once you find. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love how you're so spent. Alfred. It obviously appeals to a certain. I think, uh, like, I get Absolutely. what they're doing. But they, like, there are a couple of scenes. This is not a particularly long movie. No. But there are a couple of moments in this second half yep. that the movie stops dead just to do something that yes. it doesn't need to do. No, it doesn't. This doesn't need... It doesn't need this introduction. <laughs> Cheech like Marin plays, like, three other roles. Like, he doesn't no, need to be this I like guy. the introduction. Like, it gives a it gives a welcome to the titty twister you that do you get wouldn't a good, get. Yeah. You know. I, I think it would have been... I would have liked to... Have, have been like just diegetic sound in the scene. Whereas oh, okay. as they're approaching, there yeah. is the guy at the front who is saying this stuff and maybe they're still having a conversation oh, okay. and that's so happening in the background. Yeah, in the so back- we still yeah. get the idea of that it. That would be nice, yeah. I just don't like how the movie stops and he does like a P.T. Barnum. Yeah. like, And he breaks fourth wall, looks into the yeah. camera, the whole nine yards, yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, and but just it all just goes... Tits up, tits up, yeah. like quite literally. Yeah. When we get once we get in there, there's it still really some does. funny moments well, to I be feel, had. I feel that okay. So if we're going to talk about the second half, so I feel that people watching this might see it's just for me. It's just ticking boxes now. Um, it's ticking the exploitation boxes. Like there are parts that I enjoy, which I'll mention later. But I just feel that it's just yet yeah, we've we've ticked that we've ticked that and it's becoming. Um, There's a bunch of good gags, bunch of good ideas. Exactly, and, and the dialogue goes out the in window in this second one. I don't there know whether Quentin, but it just turns into quick cheesy one-liners. You know what girls say about me? Uh, I suck. That's, <laughs> that's the worst. Jesus I feel Christ. like that's that's. You I reckon seriously? you made that up on the fly. Yeah, exactly. I think that's so. I feel line. it. It goes out the window. Yeah, and look, it's obviously. We have to remember it's very deliberately chosen am- to do yeah, that. Exactly. Whether or not I find that effective is a different story. Exactly. Like I can acknowledge that these are deliberate choices. Yep. They just don't always work for Land, me. Yeah. Um, well, I feel the dialogue kind of disintegrates. Well, there's, there's, there's a few, there's there a few nice, nice moments. moments. I really like the, um, the you've won 
Exactly. When that's he tells him, what are you talking about, yeah. Seth? Are you such a fucking loser that you can't see that you've won? Yeah. Um, which I, I quite like that Beautiful. idea. Beautiful. Um, Seth himself still gets some pretty great lines, I think. Um, but on the whole, I mean, I still... There are moments that I love. This is, look, this is still, it's still the second half, but to me, it doesn't go belly up until um, the second vampire. The dance. Oh, the dance. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yes. I when agree. the movie I stops agree. cold for Selma Hayek to dance. Yep. Which is amazing. Look, and she is an incredibly beautiful woman. It's my introduction to Selma Hayek. I think it was, time, yeah, because yeah. I saw Desperado after this. Yeah, same. Um, yeah, and she, she's stunning, amazing. but. The movie stops yeah, for it. It does. It could have been half the length of time. Also, now we know about, because it's it popped up in every single movie, we know Tarantino has a thing for feet. That's and true. so there's this really That's awkward so moment true. where Selma Hayek puts her foot in his mouth and pours a tequila. bottle of tequila down yeah. her leg. Yep. And so he obviously wrote himself an opportunity to suck Selma Hayek's toes. Which is kind of hot to me. Look, to be honest, but, if I'm writing a fucking film. But this is this to me, like, that's the kind of thing where you're just like, <laughs> you, you, like your, your intentions are very clear, yeah. Quentin. Yeah. And it goes too long. It, it does go a long. little too long. And it Gone. feels, it, it's the same thing with the, with, the Cheech Marin thing. Mm. It just stops so he can do a thing. It stops so we can watch Selma oh, Hayek yeah. dance. This movie can be 10 minutes shorter. Yeah. Easily. All logic gets thrown out the window. It's, a, it's over half. 100 minutes. It really does. <laughs> and if you want to make a trashy exploitation movie, we're talking 80 minutes, 85 minutes. You yeah. get in, you get it done, you get the fuck out. Yeah, exactly. There are times when we just don't need this. Don't, and there's yeah, a couple yeah. of other moments later on where I'm like, cut it, get it gone we don't need it a lot of the yeah well i'm watching the deleted scenes there it was a lot gorier mm. which if you can believe that it was a lot gorier sure. which, well this is was, and this was is amazing where it feels like that this especially this second half was just we got they got them all in a room at the same time yep they were all in makeup they were all ready to go Someone's and they said let's chucked, try some shit some ideas. let's yep. do some stuff let's yep. try and it's like oh it'd be funny if i did this it'd be funny yep. if i did this i've just made a dick gun prop let's use oh, that what is the dick gun <laughs> prop <laughs> Which they use in Desperado again. It's seriously that. Someone made a dick gun prop which flick but that's which so, flicks out. It's so and it's he uses funny it until you're fourteen years old. And then as soon as you turn fourteen No, I think it's you 16. realize that it is completely impractical. It is. It's so impractical. <laughs> because you'd have to turn your whole body <laughs> to shoot anybody. No, you could t- you could shoot someone in the dick. But if what about someone? Up, who's, what about someone on the other side of you? At least with a gun, you can just kind of move your arms yeah, around. That's a good point. You've you got have to move, move your, your whole, whole body. waist yeah, that's a good point. around. I never thought of that. Well, clearly it's a it last. O- it's only no, effective. It's a, last, it's a last resort. No, no one's going to the dick gun first, Tice. I don't know, man. I feel like <laughs> I feel like that's well. He's pretty quick to get the dick gun out. Yeah. Yeah. Because all the guy, well, the guy has a switch, a little switch knife. I want everyone to 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 send us a gun emoji <laughs> if you like the dick gun. <laughs> You'll get to see the dick gun when we post our photos. Uh, oh, our yeah, photo we're going to we'll make them. sure we have a photo of the dick gun. <laughs> but this is played by like Tom Savini, who I think does a pretty great job. Oh, he's, I love he's really funny. Yeah. Um, sex Machine. Sex Machine. I, and I love his introduction. Yeah. I'm Kate. I'm Sex Machine. I'm Sex How Machine. Going? How are you? Yeah, <laughs> what's like, going on? Okay. Yeah, sure. Cool. Awesome. He can be Sex Machine. Yeah, exactly. Um, So good. But yeah, I. I uh, I think they're just they're they're knocking off things like one of my most hated uh, box ticks is is um is the fucking band turning into whatever oh. they turn into and then they blow up for no fucking reason. So well, things oh. lots of things explode for no reason in this movie. Yeah, yeah that's um, true. So I guess by then I'm just kind of like, okay, so I guess I guess people explode. Yeah. But what I, so there's two I things the about band. the band because okay, oh, we're just we're getting out of order and it's because there's so much random shit that happens. Yeah. Um, we're gonna start at the start. So so Summer Hayek turns. Well, we've got the introduction first to these extra characters. So you've right. got you've got Tom Savini's Sex Machine yep. and you've got Fred Williamson playing Frost. His name was never yep. mentioned. I had to look it up I on know, IMDb. So, yeah. so you've got and look, this is clear. Um, I think by casting those two, you are making your intentions clear. You yeah. have Tom Savini, like legendary makeup effect artist yep. for like horror and genre films. Yep, and you've got Fred Williamson, big old black exploitation star. Exactly. So you are making your You're intentions ma- you've made a very clear. You've made a we are making an exploitation grindhouse vampire movie now. Yep. This is what the second half of this movie is. Exactly. And that's fine. Yeah. That's great. That's great. 
they they have, they're used very strangely, I feel. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. Yep. So that's the first thing that happens. Then sure. you have, you know, you meet these characters, you meet Danny Trejo, you meet, you know, little conversations about drinking, they have some shots. Yep. The dance happens. Yep. And then shit hits the fan. They exactly. shoot Cheech Marin. Well, no, and no, Richie dies. No, no, that hasn't happened yet. Oh, that yet. hasn't happened yet. Yeah, they that's shoot right. the they bouncers, shoot Cheech, Cheech yep. and the other bouncers. Yep. Cheech laughs, they shoot him. Yep. And then, and then, then she, Hayek she turns into a vampire. And jumps on Richie. Jumps on Richie, bites his neck. Yep. That's essentially the moment. That's when everything that's where you're like, okay. is like, okay, this is what's going to happen. And we're going to flip a switch. Um, I do love how it, at one point it cuts to Tom Savini and he just goes, what the fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, that's how most people must have felt watching this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, what? What's going on? What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, exactly. I was watching a different exactly. movie yeah. half an hour ago. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, that happens. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> no. So, what happens is... Well, let's just... What works and what doesn't work? Let's... Uh, all right. Let's well, I've, well, for me, the dick gun and the band don't work. Okay? Yeah. Well, the band through, starts through playing the, corpses. The, <laughs> you see that? I'm like, who strung a corpse? Who uh, has time to put strings on yeah, a corpse? Yeah, that's the thing. My, my wife said to me, she goes... So hang on a minute. If they turn, they would have had to have those corpse instruments on the sideline. And so they clear- did the whole time. Exactly. So clearly, so cl- clearly, logic is cl- right out it's the window. Gone. Here. It's, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Did exactly. you notice though? One of the funny, funny bits during. Oh no, we'll get to it later. Band. It's, it's band related, but we'll get oh, to that okay, in a second. Right, we'll get right, to that in a second. Right. Yeah. So the band pull so out the these band, corpse. Fucking so that instruments. doesn't work for me. The dick gun doesn't work for me. Dick what works work. for me though, and. I like it because it's actually quite scary. Is the rat, the, the rat? So this is so they're in there. It's oh no, so this is the sorry. The I've dog. jumped. I've jumped. I've jumped. Sorry, that's my fault. So if the rat dog works for me. Oh really? Yeah, I like the rat I dog. I don't at all. No. So what? I'm jumping a bit ahead because this is the second time that they go out. They've had the the montage. No, so that's, so I've jumped no, that's I've jumped still ahead. okay. So it's it's set a, it's set really strangely. There's the initial attack, yep, right, yep, where all we're left with at the end is our four main three now because Richie has been Richie has died, has been bitten and yep. killed. So we've got and we've, we've got, got Sex family, Machine and and the family Clooney, Sex Machine and, and Frost, Frost. So that's a good ten minutes of just carnage. Right, and um, then it just drops because you have Sex Machine is bitten. Yeah, then we, but then we have yeah, we Foster's have three fucking, fucking three really story. weird interludes where we oh have God. Richie. We have Richie first waking up yep. as a vampire. That's true. Which um, is a strange scene for me. Quentin's head is huge. It's <laughs> so massive. It's I don't understand what they're Why doing with they the makeup. There's no consistency with the vampire makeup. Yeah, which. You know, it's I don't weird. know. Like, do, do I suppose you don't need to have consistency, but for some reason, it just rubs me the wrong it's way. It's really random. Where I'm seeing all these different versions, yeah, and I'm like, well, like what Salma are we talking Hayek about? Loses her hair. She kind of turns into like a lizard yeah. thing, <laughs> yeah, as well. And hers happens like, In- yeah, it's like yeah. she can tr- she can control it. Yeah. Whereas you've got other ones that are clearly like some of them. Uh, full uh, co- monsters, like full, corpses, yeah, full crazy corpse, and then other ones just have the teeth and the face, and that's it. Um. It's very inconsistent. But there's this. That's true. What do you think of that weird moment when he's confronting Tarantino and it flashes to he's like almost looking normal? Well, it flashes back. I I I think that that is Seth seeing Richie for the last time. That's what I take but that is. He's still got he's got vampire he's got, teeth still got and vampire black, teeth teeth and black and eyes. I know that. I know that. But I think he's he's taking it back to to I want to see my brother for the last time because it flashes back to the to the fat head. <laughs> Well, it's funny because you know we only see that that shot of him once, once and that's yeah. it's while there's yeah. just a little bit of silence. But it's, it's not choice quite because slow I, motion. It as kind well. of has a weird slow motion vibe yeah. to it, yeah. And I was I assumed that was kind of what they were trying to do, but it's it's I find it's a strange choice because I think it's weird that they don't commit the whole way mm. and show him like not like not like you know misty camera lens smiling no, no. in the sunlight yeah, but at he least he could that. still be doing the same because he's kind of moving like an animal he's doing this weird kind of like um like shoulder roll shoulder roll that he's going to pounce thing yeah, he yeah. could still be doing that but his face could be normal yeah it's, it's just a, it's a weird choice it they kind of go halfway but I, th- I take that as 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 Seth seeing seeing Richie sure, last time sure. I that's like, how I take it yeah I just uh, yeah. I'm not convinced I, I think that that's convinced? that's a likely choice but I'm not convinced yeah. just yet yeah um, Fair deal. Because there's yeah, there's too many things working 
that as a as, work, if a yeah. filmmaker wanted to get that point across, you, why you wouldn't choose to do other certain things anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which leads then into yeah the the scene where they're staking everybody and so yep, Tom Savini gets flames. bit yeah and he and has this kind of the... hilarious like Fucking, slapsticky kind of, kind of turning this thing. is literally where if I hadn't had to write notes for this this is where I would. I would make a cup of tea. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? As soon as Frost starts his, vi- his Vietnam story. story. It's awful. It's <laughs> it's such a bad moment. <laughs> and the worst is yeah. when you stare. If if you watch that scene and don't pay any attention to Frost and just stare at right. Cartel, uh, Cartel Clooney, Clooney and, and Scott kids. and Kate, yeah. they just sit there with dead eyes. Because oh. it's clear that they've had to film this. You know, this is this is a four hour se- like filming. Right. They are not reacting. They are not. They they stop oh, acting. I forget seeing them. It's, I know we see their back and that's Scott right, turns. But you can and see that. You can see the side, you can of, their see the faces. side of them. Right. They right. literally stop <laughs> acting. And then there's the bit, obviously, when yeah, Scott turns around and yeah. sees Tom Savini, and he's like, "Oh, it's fine." Like, oh, no. Because suddenly it's a fucking Warner Brothers cartoon. I don't know, what the fuck? And it, uh, just say something, yeah. but it's and it goes okay. for so long, yeah, it so takes forever. long. This fucking scene, man. And it, it honestly, it's, it's, yeah, it's easily the worst thing in the movie, it is. which is a real shame because I like Fred Williamson's character up to that point. I like how he can magically tear people's hearts out. I know out. how he's like a well, I think it's a nod to his kung fu days because sure, I, I sure, looked sure, at sure. his back catalogue and he's a bit of a, a bit of a kung fu guy. Yeah, he kind of had a he had a stint in yeah. all kinds of exploitation. He did. He yeah. had a stint in like the Italian post apocalypse. Apocalyptic you, stuff. Yeah, did you see some did, of those black exploitation uh, uh, yeah, titles of films? Yeah, I was like, whoa! I, how, look, I don't. How when, can you, you get know, away? You can with imagine this stuff. what word would, yeah, would feature talking, in a black yeah. black exploitation film. But yeah, yeah. Um, like, anyway, so yeah, he rips out this vampire's heart. It's yeah, fun, it's funny. Stabs it with a stabs pencil. Stabs it with a pencil. Great stuff. And then he gets a weird, weird dog-faced mouth when he turns oh, into a vampire. Oh, it was horrible, wasn't it? It's, it's like a pig a, thing. It's awful. Oh, yeah, it it's piggish. So bad. Warthoggy. Bad, bad. Another oh. bad moment of yeah. makeup. Yeah. I like the shot, though. I like the shot of the vampires um, the, all the bats yeah. flying in from behind him from the broken window. Yep. Um, and the running down. Yeah, look. And this, there's some really shaky CGI. There's some really shaky practical effects. Yep. Um, it's all right. Look, it's fun. It's but still it is fun. fun, and it's obviously going for a certain vibe. Exactly. Just, but you know, to me, not all of it works. Yeah, very no, well. No, it doesn't. There are ones where you go, you kind of double take and go, "What the fuck?" Yeah, is they what trying are they trying to do, to do, do with that? Yeah. What is the look that they're trying to get? But then once they're in there, they have like a they ties. They have a fucking weapons montage. Which I do is love the badass. weapons collection. Who doesn't like a fucking yeah. weapons montage? Yeah, it's pretty great. And before Daryl on The Walking Dead, Kate from From Dust Till Dawn picks up a fucking. Shotgun crossbow, yeah, with pump rocking. action. I love it. The pump oh, action crossbow, it's pretty cool. I can ring that. I shit do love on. that. It's also because it. Um, That's the other part that I just love. Well, actually, this and this that leads. I want to mention the one. There's there's a shot, two shots in this film that I think are the best shots in the film. Yep. Where um, you've got the little sequence with Jacob behind the bar. Where he picks up the bat and picks up the shotgun, but that leads to my favorite shot where he gets up and you see him first, you see his reaction yep. shot, and it's kind of through you know when you when something's really hot yeah, and yeah. it has that kind yeah, of that I wobbly love that effect. Shot. Yeah. So you see his reaction yep. and you just do the cut straight to what he sees. What he's seeing. And it's just this ocean wall of vampires, vampires just yeah. sitting there waiting to just take him down. Waiting and to which pounce. is because there hasn't been we haven't seen that yet. We haven't yeah. seen that really the number, the sheer number of them. Of them yeah. I love it. I think it's, it's really great. Shot. Just so the good. the yeah the one But two. I do love that that for one it's my favourite shot of the movie where he comes out from behind the bar and there's that heat. You're right, yeah. you described it so well, that heat vision. Yeah. Where yeah, something's looks really, really he just looks great. Awesome. He looks awesome. Um, yeah, and then he obviously goes back in there, and he gets bitten, which which is he was t- I don't I don't yeah. I'm not on board for that. I think that's kind of a weaker, a weaker moment in the movie. I think it'd be better if he just died in the room, in like as in if they shot him. No, no, no. As in he just he oh, gets he, got he gets bitten, and, like the way that Scott dies, like when he comes out at the end, he just dies. Yeah. Um, fighting. Yeah. Because I mean, him turning to me is kind of like well. Then what are we doing with this whole faith thing? 
Like, what are we doing? Good point. What was the point? What was of the, the point, of, was it the point of it all? And so that's what makes it me think makes more you about think it. Was a concept it was, idea? It was yeah. a concept idea reverse engineered from. So wouldn't true. it be cool if we could bless a whole bunch of water? Because you're not paying off your thematic that's idea. So true. Yeah, that's so true. By, turn, by having him turn into a vampire. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. and also I don't like the scene. I don't like the dialogue interchange where he's he doesn't believe that they'll kill him. Oh, such a waste of fucking time. It's such a waste Let's of time kill because some we are fucking all, vampires. That's it. We are geared. We are ready to Let's go. We just rock. have the great weapons montage. Everyone's loaded up, ready to go. <laughs> I have no idea how effective that jackhammer stake thing is going to be. <laughs> I love it. Though. I see that and I'm like, well, that's not the best how choice. How the fuck Come are you going to pull that like, out quickly? Come so, on. There must be something better in there than Seriously, that. Seriously, no. But and then it stops dead to him for him to have this conversation. Seriously, which would have, which you could have done in that he could have said, "You have to kill me if I turn." They could have gone, "Okay, we will, we will." Yeah, and he could just say, "I don't believe you. You better prove me wrong." Yeah, when it happens. Yeah, oh, that's much better. And we're done. I do love though that George Clooney, <laughs> Seth just goes, "I promise, Jacob." Yeah, like he's done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure, yes. I'll fucking kill you. I don't give a shit. Because he's 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 geared, yeah, he's geared up. up. He's geared up. He's pumped. ready to go. He's, he's like, like he's "Okay, got, let's kill some fucking yeah. vampires." Yeah. He's he's riding that adrenaline, oh. and all you're doing is killing everyone's buzz exactly. to get out there. Yeah. That adrenaline let's is rock. what you've got. Let's rock, people. Yeah, I just don't like it. It just yeah, it doesn't work. And 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 ultimately, still then kind of fucks with the thematic thing as well exactly. because it's kind of like come on come okay, on okay sure you know blah 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 they're gonna yeah. kill him you know yeah. now what are we doing are we doing this thing where it's like did 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 they ever not trust him are we now you know what i mean are we yeah. are we doing something where they didn't trust him until now and now they're gonna trust him or anything and yeah. i don't know or you know likewise he didn't trust them or he didn't give them responsibilities and exactly. now he's giving them responsibility none of there was none of that God. leading up to it no that's true um that's so true but yeah and this is also dumb because they actually have the best position where they are. They this is lose, what, yeah, they this is lose what Sam their, said. their best position because they could Tunnel, bottleneck them. Bottleneck them and just off them one by one. one. That's Get, it. And I don't like that fucking Scott, who has the best weapon, uses it twice. Dude, you should be mowing down vamps with the that. The problem pick. is mowing them is down. That that's one of those it's one of those things where you it, it feels like it's gonna be a really good idea. And then and he sprays it, and, and it's, it's like comes out it comes out like <laughs> half a meter. Maybe it was like one of those home brand imitation it super soakers was. that I got for Christmas oh, because you? we couldn't afford real super oh, soakers. Dude. They were like sixty bucks back yeah. in the day, man. Yeah, well, I'm, my parents aren't paying sixty dollars for a fucking water pistol. Dude, I got the fifteen dollar imitation one. Did you? Yeah, oh. and they I got the they original. Kind of worked. I got the original, the the yellow, white, and green. Yeah, yeah. That's, Do you know how much those fuckers cost now? If you were to have an original Super Soaker Tice, I looked it up. Do you know how much they cost? No, don't tell me. Jesus don't Christ! Don't tell me. Is it really you that get, kind? You get uh, at least five hundred, eight hundred dollars. You, you're kidding for a, me. An original in box, though. No, 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 not in box. No, They're seriously. They're it out of the box. Okay, if yeah. anyone has any of these <laughs> right now, you feel free to donate them. Put them motherfuckers <laughs> online. I'm telling you that wow. you're gonna you're gonna pay you're gonna pay rent with your old Super Soaker. 50. That's amazing. You would yeah. pay rent for a month. That's yeah, great. Exactly. Anyway, so yeah, they fucking lose yeah, their, their their prime ground. What the fuck? Which you know, if I've learned anything from 300, it's exactly. that if you, you, you bottleneck, you bottleneck, man. How good is it? Because it suddenly becomes their numbers mean nothing. Exactly. When it's when, when it really does. Because if it becomes four on two, the only thing I was thinking oh, of is because it was so man. much of them. So many of them. It would just stack up. It would start stacking up in the hallway. The and they, they, they start burning. They start burning, they Tice. Do. They, they light just fire melt. and come on. Come on, man. Be a sake. The, the, the and then they get out of the hallway yep. and shut the door behind <laughs> them. And I'm like, at least leave the door open because you want to be out of... Exactly. It, you know, you need if to day, retreat back. Because thinking... Daylight is coming. Daylight is coming. Stay in the it's fucking like, room. Do as much as you can, and then go. Okay, let's retreat back. Let's re, you know, let's yep. get, let's reload. Let's get some more stuff. Yep. Let's, let's you know, fill some more water. Oh, no, let's shut the door and make it harder for, to get back yeah, in there. We're not thinking. Yeah. We're not thinking. But you know, and this is, I shouldn't be thinking about these kind of things in a movie like this because that's not the court. That's exactly. not the. That's not the purpose of this kind of movie. That's true. But it I is to get help, out there and I kick can't ass. Help but feel that because it's not selling. It's not selling the rest of it. That's true. So I end up thinking about these things. And what comes up after... So once they get out of the room, Sex Machine is a vampire. Yes. And, and a rat dog some, comes somehow out. Somehow it turns into a rat It's I don't know dog. why it works for me. It is scary for me and okay. it's awesome. Yeah, and I, I love find, it. I don't find it scary. 
Um, I think that it's the best looking practical effect in the movie, I would say, hands down. Whips his head off. He pulls his head off. And a rat head comes out. How the fuck does that... I mean, we just have to accept the fact that there's going to be no consistency in the rules of what happens. Like, some of the vampires burn, some of them melt, some of them them explode, explode, some of them don't, nothing happens. Some of them just get staked and they stay staked just like that. Oh, Um, I remember. So, keep going. So, yeah, I guess there's no, there isn't, there's no, he can turn into a rat dog, whatever. It's fine. Rat dog, man. Um, He seems to be. Fairly easily dealt with as well. Yeah, he's shot in the head. Just, he just gets and shot and, fire, and, 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 dead. and it's fine. Yeah, exactly. It's done. Now, don't get us wrong, people. We do love this. We are ragging on it, but we fucking love it. But there, there's one bit where he pushes the shot. So Jacob, before he gets bit, pushes the shotgun through Frost to pump action. That is a concept moment. And then he pulls the shotgun out, goes to hit him, and he melts. He melts. I'm done at this point. At yeah. this point, I'm making my second cup of tea. Do yes, <laughs> and look, this is this is it is bonkers. It's designed just to be a good time. Yeah, and I don't think I would I would ever point. have this conversation if I wasn't in a situation like this where, where it's like, well, we're going to talk about it for exactly. an hour and a half. Yeah, exactly. So it's now it's it forces you to kind of have those well, conversations. Yeah, have those moments. Yeah. And look, I don't think anyone. I don't think. I think it's pretty much universally agreed that the second half. Is not as effective as the first half. I'd of like this to movie. know if you don't agree with us, though. Yeah, if you don't if you agree, don't, let me. Please, well, most things that I've heard, us. like most reviews I've read, and most things that I've heard yeah. people say, I think that's it's universally agreed. Yeah, but this exactly. could be wrong. Th- these are people that you know. These are review writers and things like that. That's I don't true. know what regular Joe thinks. Whether or not they like, I'm bored of this shit at the start. Let's get the vampire stuff happening. Exactly. Um, exactly. What else? Um, but yeah. Then it kind of, then it kind of. Uh, well, then we lose, we lose Jacob. Jacob lose dies because yep. he turns into a vampire, and he again turns into a weird kind of like demon-looking one. He doesn't. Yeah, I don't he, mind his. He, I th- he I grows feel like a goatee. He <laughs> turns into almost like a werewolf, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Extra I like hair. it because I think it's ex- I think it's a little bit. The of practical a, effect where he loses half his face is excellent as well. So That's a really awesome. good one. So awesome. Um, and but then yeah. yeah, Scott shoots him. He Scott, explodes. Yeah. Scott gets mauled. S- Scott gets mauling. mauled. And God, like Kate shoots him. He's just, he's just bad though. He's. <laughs> I love that you think he's bad. He's a really bad actor. Like, <laughs> he, he can't even sell. He can't even sell his death scene. Yeah, it's a bit lame. Kill, 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 kill me, Kate. Kate. Kill me. It's yeah, it's a bit like, weird. Oh, okay, and then yeah, he okay. explodes. Yeah, I love that he explodes. I'm like, I'm like, well, it's just, just well, you fucking can't just exploding <laughs> now. <laughs> Why the fuck are people exploding? What what's going, like, what's on? going, what's going on? on? Yeah, I don't know. What the fuck? I, I feel you, sex machine. Yeah, sex I'm machine. with you there. Yep. Um, oh. So let's skip ahead a bit. They get circled. They get covered in light. For, it turns daylight. And then the ending happens, Tice. I do like that the sun hits the mirror ball. Okay, so that's, that is a clever... That's a nice... And that is a concept that you can... Yeah, you it's can, thinking. That is one of those things that would be like, hey, do you know what would be cool? And it works because they're in a bar. The room. It, it's fantastic. It's a yeah. great way to, cl- yeah. It's a and that's it. That's it's a very much a. Yeah. It's the equivalent of kill the boss and all the all the minions die. Yeah. Which is a bad. It's a bad way to do it. Yes. That's the lazy yeah. version of this. This yes. is them saying, well, we can't have them go one by one. Exactly. We need a mass. We need. We need a to, mass way for it to, to end. Exit the bad guys thing. So we're going to start a countdown where the thing will just explode. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um. Go. On. An ending, and then it ends. And then it ends. I do like. It's disappointing for me. I look. I I, th- I kind of like. I like they get out. You I like, like the that, dialogue between them. I no. like when he says, when he talks about um, El Rey. No, he's like, were they psychos? And he's like, did they? Did look they look like, like psychos? psychos? Psychos do not explode when sunlight hits them. Yeah, yeah. It's all right, but but. And, he, at that and, point, and when I'm, he's like, any place point, is good as another. Exactly. At that point, I'm spent though. Like, yeah, look, I don't it does, get the it, ending that I wanted to get. No. I and get it goes it, on I longer than it ending. should as well. It, no, I think that ending was was quick enough. The co- the dialogue stuff. Yeah. I just, think it ends up feeling like it feels like it's good five or six minutes. It's quick though. It doesn't linger for too long. Oh, it I feels feel. like it, it dragged a bit for me, especially the bit with between him and Cheech. I felt like yeah. they kind of went over the same ground. I think they could have. It should have been him and Kate yeah. a lot more. I liked the interchange between him and Kate. Yeah, yeah. I like. But then I feel bad for Kate. 
Like, yeah, I know. How I bad mean, do you feel you, for her? Her whole fucking family is gone. And he just leaves and she's got the RV and it's kind of like, like well, five grand? Or well, you don't, you don't really know. You don't know. know. Yeah. Ten grand? How much would you give her? Well, see, how much I, would you give well, her? Well, how twice? do you put a price on that? How much would you give Sorry, her? Your, your dad, Sorry, brother, you and recently mum have died. His, passed away. His, you ne- you're going to need a lot of therapy. His money for... His money for the... Th- for the for the worth of spending. <laughs> couple of weeks. Well, really, like, think about it. If you gotta, you got to get home, you gotta, you're got to going to have to find somewhere to live. So if every bill is 100, he gives her, like... He doesn't give her a lot. He gives her two kind of wads. I, I underestimate... What um what this like you know what? when you open up like a suitcase of money and they're like yeah. ooh, ooh you could tell me that there is ten million dollars in there or you could tell me there's a hundred thousand I would not know the difference yeah neither do I so I I can't I have no judge no of that I don't whatsoever know. I don't know either. one bag of money is just whatever amount it needs to be in the film <laughs> for me so whatever he gives how much her, would you give her though how much you've got oh, let's say you've got if I, what have I got though yeah have I got right, an well, infinite amount of money no you don't have an infinite amount of do money do I have a million dollars no let's say you have five million I have five million have five I would give million. her a million you'd give her a million well because yeah that's true I'd give her a million too I feel like anything over I'd a give, million yeah I'd give Cheech kind of half just, a million I'd give him a half no I'd give him fucking fuck off I'm not giving him anything I'd give him fucking very little he got my brother killed that's what I mean I'd, he'd get very me. little from me he would yeah, I should have stuck at fifteen percent. <laughs> Fuck you. But yeah, um, okay. You'd give her a million. Yeah, that's nice. Anything I'd over anything million. over two million is just. Oh, I'm not telling you. I give her more. I thought you'd give her. No, less. no. I'm talking about for yourself. Oh right. Anything over two million is just kind of <laughs> like excessive money. Yeah, really? that's true. Like Especially you, in Mexico, you can live a very comfortable <laughs> life in Mexico for two million dollars. They're, 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 you know, they're American bills too. Shit, yeah. yeah. So this is like forty <laughs> zillion dollars of Mexican money. <laughs> yeah. For, you know, but him. then it's my fa- it's it's the beautiful, beautiful break it in and twist it off as you like. You get that beautiful pan back of the of the Mexican temple. Do you not love that? Oh, that the is matte painting. That is that one is of the the all time great matte paintings. I oh. I love a matte painting like nothing else. I love that shot. I, I miss them. It's I miss my, them. Yeah. It's one of those things that yeah. I really just miss that that do, they just don't exist I know. anymore. It's very awesome. Um. Yeah, I don't know, man. There's not really much else to say. It's I have a good time watching this movie, but I don't ever want to have to like. Oh, it'll be analyze it'll be, it ever yeah. again. It'll be another ten. <laughs> analyze it? No, no. You never analyze. That's the thing. I think you should. This is not a movie you shouldn't to analyze. analyze. No, you know. But we wanted to pick something that everyone had seen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a widely seen film. Yeah, I would love to know if people that haven't seen it. Yeah, like watch hopefully it now. people aren't watching listening to this because I would. Apparently, when this was initially came out, yep. it was the twist was kind of spoiled in the marketing anyway. The oh, trailer, really? the trailer kind of sold it as a vampire movie. The, the oh. poster you knew was a vampire movie. Did but you? For me, it's a real shame because it's so well set up as a shock. Exactly. So in this day and age where you like you, I could put on a movie for somebody without showing them the trailer, without exactly. showing them a poster. Yeah, I would yeah. love to see someone's reaction to this film. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's, yeah. it's yeah, from yeah, dusk to dawn. It's good. It's a good watch. It I won't watch, watch it for another 10 years. It but, will um, be at least 10 years. But yeah, it was good. And I just um yeah, I don't I don't where do you rank it in Rodriguez? Relatively oh, actually, high a, a to hard, be honest because question. I'm not the biggest fan. I feel like he's made I haven't watched Predators yet. I like well, he didn't direct that. He, oh, he, he just ex- he executive produced it. Yeah, oh, um, I think he might wrong. have written written some of it. Um, maybe worked on the screenplay, perhaps. Okay. Um, I like Desperado a lot. I love Desperado. Um, I enjoy El Mariachi. I've only seen once. I've never seen El Mariachi. Yeah. Um, I enjoy Once Upon a Time in Mexico quite a bit. Yeah. See, I prefer Desperado. I prefer Desperado definitely, yeah. but I I feel like that's probably his last. Good movie. Yeah, I don't when know. When did Sin City come in? Hey, After man, Once Upon a Time in Mexico or before? Uh, I feel like it might have been before. Yeah. Because I honestly, he has not made a good movie. Like the Machete movies can really can just fall off a cliff. Oh, hang I, on a minute. What about, what, hang on. I what, do not Planet like them Terror Tice. What are you talking uh, about? Yeah, okay. Planet Terror is all right. Planet but Terror. What do you mean? It's all right. It's It's fun. It's not. It's fun for what it is. It's effective, but yeah, I'd say yeah. Okay, I'll pay that. I'll pay that. I'll pay Come that. on, Planet Terror, Tice. But we're talking about like oh, hang on a minute, Sin City, Tyson. Yeah, but that's what I said. Is Sin City before or after? So it's after Once Upon a Time in Mexico. So Sin City is for me the last 
his last one, like absolutely effective film. You're talking about the first Sim City. The as first well. Sim City, definitely. The second one is a piece of poop. Yeah. Um, well, no, Sin because City, in goes, between that, you've got all these. You've got Sin City, then Planet Terror. So Planet Terror for me was the last thing that he did really sure. well. Sure, you got the yeah. The Machete movies don't work. You've got these Spy Kids sequels that had already worked, like gone I know, past I know there. I Spy Kids. Um, you know, no one really cared anymore about Spy Kid movies. <laughs> Um, I like the faculty. I fucking love the faculty. For it what has it a is. little bit in my heart for the faculty. Just a little, you know, his version of uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Sure, something. sure. But yeah, to me, he just doesn't. There's none of that. Uh, yeah, there's none true. of that He's energy kind of, left. There's none of that kind of. Like, it blows to, my mind that the same guy that made this made Spy Kids 4D no, all the time wanted, in the he world. He had kids. He wanted to make something his kids could watch. Yeah, but he's he's already done that three times. Yeah, so his kids get older. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've talked right, about this movie. Ladies enough. and gentlemen, that, that was enough from us. Anyway, we're gonna open up the mailbag. We're gonna go digging into my sack mail. of mail. Oh, mail oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Gonna go digging into my sack. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. My mail sack. We're gonna go into Tyson's sack. No, that sounds even worse. Exactly. Yeah. You said it. I spelt it spelt differently. Okay. M A I L. Okay. Sack. Um, anyway, so a um, friend of the podcast, Nicole, has sent us an email. Oh, yep. Uh, she was uh, making reference to uh, the conversation about palate cleanser movies, Ooh. Nick, that I believe we had uh, last week. Yep. Um, I do it a lot. Nicole has emailed us. Subject line, palate cleanser movie. <laughs> <laughs> How about the movie you put on to make you sleep, particularly when you're sick? For example, if I have a head cold, I put on the Green Lantern because it makes me sleep about the third, about a third of the way in. Yeah, Green Lantern. And I love that. Do you own that? Do you own the Green Lantern? Does she own it in order to know. watch it? She Maybe. Have to. Well, I suppose. Well, it's. I feel like uh, it's one of those movies that it, pops up on yeah, everything every at all times. Because like, everyone wants it to watch. It. Everyone's just kind of like, shit. let's just put Green Lantern on. Fuck, that was bad. Yeah, it's not a good movie. But so I feel. It's I feel bad. that it would put you to sleep. I, well, do, I don't know. I What's do, your um? What do you have a sick movie, Nick? Do you I have like do, a sick day movie? I do have a sick. I have two. Okay. One is uh, uh, Spielberg's Jaws. I love to I love to watch Spielberg's sure. Jaws because it kind of I can kind of come in and out and I don't know where I am because I've seen it so many times that I love it. Um, but my def my definite go to is it's not a movie it's a it was a TV series that came out in the nineties very oh. very short it was called the Storyteller by Jim the Jim Henson Jim Henson story story yeah uh, and it, what's no Jim <laughs> Henson people. <laughs> Let's start that again. Let's start the game. Jesus. <laughs> I just imagine like this bad this bad showtime special, the no! Jim Henson story. Don't ruin it. Jim don't Hansen ruin it. Played no. By. no, don't ruin it. It's my favorite. Jim Henson. It was back when, you know, everything was done with uh puppets and it was oh, puppets meant so much and it was amazing. There was barely any CG, there was no CG in it at all. It was lovely. He really did kind of master the art of making inanimate objects seem like they had feelings. Yeah, man. But yeah, the the storyteller I watch when I'm sick, especially because if you actually watch the storyteller, and I'm talking about the first one, not, sure. the, not the next one that they made with the, I think it's Greek myths or something. Myths oh, okay. Or something. No. Um, uh, if you watch it, th- it's not it's not really a kid's show, Tice. It's uh, quite dark and fucked. Actually, which is why I love it. It's, it's go- you're not shocking anyone. No. We're, we're talking about Jim Henson, Jim the guy Henson. that made Dark Crystal and exactly. Labyrinth. You're telling me his his television show was a little fucked up. So yeah, I, b- I believe Fuck, that. that. was awesome. I was absolutely so believe that. And the narrator of it, the the storyteller, was the man who just passed, Mister uh, uh, John Hurt. Oh no, that was a while ago, actually. John Hurt. It was passed relatively away. recent. It was past the re- yeah. recent. Yeah, I think it was within. Was a month. it this year? Yeah, it was this year. It was this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, what's your movie, Tice? What do you watch when you get sick? So, does it have Van Damme in it? Uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it does. Yeah. I reckon there'd be a few Van Damme ones. Yeah. Do you know what I do love? I like Cyborg. Cyborg oh, gets I a run. Seen that one? Oh, really? Yeah. Fuck, that's a it's a good one. Yeah. Um. I do have no, a I reckon my sick day me. movies are uh, have become the Marvel movies now. What? Yeah, I think when I'm like when I want comfort movies, you watch a Mar- you chuck in a thaw. I'll, I'll put on anything Marvel. Wow. I'll just bundle myself up into yeah. Duna. Yeah. And um, because they're long, two and a bit hours usually. Yeah, they are. Or at least close to two hours. Yeah. They. 
I've seen them all a zillion times, so it's not like I have to concentrate. But I feel like I'm, and it cheers me up. Lovely. These are the kind of movies that cheer me up. Yeah, um, also, I have this. I will watch a Batman movie. Oh, really? Any Batman? Any? Like, oh, I, if I am, that <laughs> seems to be my <laughs> hangover. My hangover thing. Really? Is, you watch? I want to watch Batman. I want to watch Batman forever. It's I watch any of them. Really? Like it's just I just and it, like it's disgusting. It, it it's as simple as I want to watch Batman. And it's like, what kind of Batman? Yeah, I just, I want to watch Batman. I, I want Batman to be on my television. Right. Doing anything. That's awesome. So it could be any of the animated features. It could oh, be the animated television series. show. It could be any of the old movies. It could right. be any of the, the Nolan movies. Oh, I love that. It will not be Batman versus Superman. <laughs> it will not be. Never. Batman versus Superman. No, that'll never happen. I'm going to. It will not be Suicide Squad. Anyway, thanks for your question, Nick. Yeah. Um, I not you, Nick. question. Nicole. Nicole. Friend of the podcast, Nicole. Thank you for your email. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, mailbag section. We've appreciated. Thank you for the people that have been tweeting at us and yeah. like liking Facebook statuses and sharing things. It's been really nice to see this little community of ours growing. Thank you. Um, Probably Sister Jacob's going hard on the Twitter there. Yeah, and that's, and that's awesome. Um, mm. If you ever want to just make a comment on the show itself... You're more than welcome to on any of the the links to the show. We've got obviously the Twitter linked on the show. You can just I don't know how Twitter works. Do you comment on it? <laughs> oh my I don't god! <laughs> Literally just put hey, okay. But Everyone you, else who's it, listening know how knows how to work Twitter. Yeah. I'm not going to explain. Um, but it to on you. the Facebook link, when the the episode gets posted, exactly, you're more than welcome to comment on that. We'd love to hear your feedback and what right, you think. Anything. If you have any kind of comments about what we've been talking about, get yeah. on it. But um, most importantly, write us a review and rate us because it really, it really does help us. It does help a lot. Yeah. It really does help a lot. So, um, all okay. right. Well, it's we time for crossing the streams. Cross the streams. Cross the streams. I forgot how the song went. We had a good song. No, it was a terrible song. Was it? Yeah. Oh, you on. had a good. I song. I had a good song. Yeah. The the music that was playing in my head when yeah. I was singing crossing the streams was very good. Unfortunately, <laughs> none of you will ever hear it because it's just in my head. Right, and that's a good, uh, good talk. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, well, uh, shall I go first? Cross the streams. Yeah, you I'm going to cross the streams first. So yes, I'm recommending a movie from Stan this St- week. Stan. Yes, we do love a bit of Stan action. Yeah. Uh, it might be on some of the other ones as well. You never know. But I'm going to recommend true. the 1994 documentary Hoop Dreams, <gasps> directed by Steve James. Hoop Dreams. Is a slog. I'm warning you all now. It's it is a slog. nearly three hours. Whoa! I didn't know that. But it is one of the most immersive documentary experiences I've ever had. Yeah, I've heard it's amazing. Um, it is the story of two young uh, African American boys trying to make a career out of basketball, and it follows them through. I think. Uh, maybe their last couple of years of high school into their first year of college. Yep. Maybe their first two years of college. Sure. It is very expansive. It, 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 you see them grow from these teenagers with very little kind of awareness of the world around them to, you know, these young men yeah. who uh, have to deal with these kind of the challenges that life, especially for these underprivileged kids, these African-American kids that are growing up probably, you know, in fairly rough circumstances, uh-huh. the, the, the kind of things that they have to face that we will, you know, you and I would never ever need to worry about. Um, it's very, uh, it uses basketball as this kind of, this dream, uh, funnily enough, of, called of, hoop, hoop dream. of hoops. Jesus. Fucking hell, I just fell into no, that No, that's one, all right, I? it's all right. Um, but it, it, it presents it as this, um, as the ultimate goal yeah. and you see the, the a better life. Yeah. It really yeah. represents a better life for yeah. them and you see them go through so many things to try and make it work and it's heartbreaking and it's, uh, it's, you know, uh, you get, you get caught up in their victories and yeah. you feel sad for their defeats and, yeah. um, you really come to, come to love these two guys, um, I've always wanted to see it. Yeah, it's, it's always it's been on the beautiful list. Beautiful, and it was, it was the movie that apparently changed the way that the Academy voted for um, docos, docos right. in the Academy Awards because there was such a hoo ha 
about about who, it not getting wow. nominated. Right. Okay. Because it was one of those movies that it was it was the shoe in to win before the nominations. Right. It was like yeah, it's it's, it's just gonna it's win. Gonna, it's the best documentary of the year by far. It's the best documentary of the decade. Yeah. Like people were what talking. What year was it again? Nineteen ninety four, and then it didn't get nominated. Right. And this is it. Also, kind of came it, it it came to light that in the documentary um, department or uh, whatever you call it. Sure. Branch is the word I'm looking for. The documentary yep. branch of the Academy. The way they used to watch movies is that they would get them all in a you, when they were in a room together. Love they'd watch them in a room have together. This vast knowledge of the Academy. It's really Keep going. like it's, Keep it's going. so fucking useless. <laughs> I can't tell you where Denmark is or what language they speak, but I can tell you how the, the documentary Academy branch Wars. used to vote for pictures. Yep. So they would all sit in there with a torch, right? And they would li- they would have their torches on, right? Right? And they would start the movie, and at any point, if they lost more than, I think it was a third of the torches, if you were no longer wanting to watch the movie, what? you turned your torch off. If uh, I think if a third of the audience had their torches off, they would stop it and move on to the next one. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, and so this came out that this is what happened. So they were watching Hoop Dreams and it got turned off within about 14, 15 minutes, apparently. Oh, it was really quite quick because there was obviously some people there to like basketball documentary, you know, uppity people. Uppity doco, what kind of uh, you know purists? Fucking stupid idea is this to vote? How <laughs> is this to vote anything? Okay, is yeah, how it happened, man. Sure. And so it came to light. This is what. Uh, this is why this it didn't get nominated. Didn't and nominate. so it was basically it was it was wow. the rules were changed and it was demanded that they had to. You have to actually see the see, fucking you movie. You had to see the dicks. whole thing and you had to Jesus. prove that you had seen the whole thing and stuff like this. That's so awesome. awesome. Yeah. I'm in. I've wanted to watch it. Get on it, man. What is it? Netflix. It's on Stan. Stan. Awesome. What do you got for us? Well, my crossing the streams is a little lighter. It's a it's a beautiful um, it's a beautiful movie which is on Netflix uh, called Swingers. Tice. Oh, Swingers! Tell me, you haven't seen Fucking Swingers. I love Swingers. Directed by Doug Lyman. Which looking up Doug, I was like, Doug, what have you done lately? Doug Lyman. Yeah, he's a legend. Go on. Yeah, Edge is of Tomorrow. He? Yeah, that's it. Give me something uh, else. The the only good born born movie, Born Identity. Oh, I don't know about uh, that. I think go. People, people have gripes. Nineties, yeah, ninety five, nineties fun. Like classic. But apart from that, Tyson, go the first born, Mister and Mrs Smith. Yeah, that was and disappointment. Edge, and Edge of Tomorrow. That's it, Doug Lyman. and no, Swingers. He's, he's not. He's not. You know, he hasn't I done th- a heap no, of stuff. I, I but thought, what he's done he is good. very good. Yeah. He's pretty. He's hitting pretty high. He did Jumper as well, though. Exactly. That was his. That and was a misfire. Unfortunately, if you do jumper, uh, he's also he's got something coming out soon, which I'm kind of uh, a new Tom Hanks movie he? coming out soon, which looks kind of exciting. But yeah, Doug Liman, 1996, beautiful movie, written by um the beautiful John Favreau. John Favreau. John Favreau, you should write more things, man. He's yeah, a, he's amazing. So the movie, if you if you don't know what it is, if you've never heard of Swingers, um, it's a it's a breakup movie to to. Nail it, uh, to kind of boil it down, it's a breakup movie and and how a guy's friend ha- helps him feel better, <laughs> and it has in that he has um it's added with uh he uh, uh sorry John Favreau's character because he's written and starred in it, but he his character is an actor. All his friends are actors, and they talk about auditions because it's set in L.A. And uh, how, you know, they didn't get, uh, did you get that Disney audition? No, I didn't. You know, things like that. And um, and it shows a bit of the club scene of LA in that time, which was nice. This is the movie that is, uh, I won't say responsible, but Ooh. was was very uh, influential yeah. in my uh, 20s. absolutely like crazy adoration for the band Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. Oh, I love Big because Bad they Voodoo appear Daddy. in the club scene. They do singing "You and Me in the Bottle Makes Three Tonight," which yeah. is an incredible, great, incredibly love great that song. song. Yeah. And Go Daddy O, I think, is the other one in the movie. Yep. Um, but yeah, Swingers. It's so amazing, and it's one of the one of the raddest uh, uh, phrases <laughs> word the the type of phrase they call each other baby and and oh, that's so your money. money. That's so money, baby. It's so money. That's baby. so money, baby. Very early Vince Vaughn and yeah. almost never. Better, really. Oh, I think so Vince good. Vaughn in that movie is is so incredibly good. Yeah. Um, I, the, just all 
there are so many parts in that movie that I love. I know it, was... it has it actually has one of the most excruciating. Oh, it does. Phone I think call have we talked about this before. No, we haven't. Oh, I man. think we talked about it before, but not on this podcast. Sure. Yeah. yeah no, the phone but call yeah, scene it was the. Oh, I love that. It's scene. that one he man's plays, attempt it's... to to leave a, an answering machine message that turns just the. But most that is awkward. all John Favreau. Like yeah. he sells that moment. Like it's yeah. it's like George Costanza at his best. It is. Like it's, it's so it's, beautiful. Yeah, no, you're right. So beautiful. You're right. And it's funny. It's um. Yeah, that was I. My fascination with Vegas, strangely enough, almost <laughs> from that? almost comes from Vegas, that baby. too. Because I just Vegas. love the idea of you've had a bad day and your Let's best friend rolls the- up your day and go. And do you know? Do you know what's going to make this? Like this will cheer you up. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Vegas. The idea that you could just get in a car and drive for two hours and be in Vegas. Let's go to Vegas. Blew my mind. Let's I'm go like, to Vegas. Oh my God, I want to be able to do that. Tice, you and me, Vegas, Let's baby. Go to Vegas, Vegas, baby, Vegas, baby. And I love, I do love that movie a lot. I Swingers will watch people, that again. Please watch it. It's 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 awesome. It is. If you're just looking for some a little bit of fun, it's one of those ones where you can come home and go, oh, I can't be fuck watching. What did Nick and Tice talk about? Swingers. It's very Bang. um it it, it 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 sneaks up in you mm. in regards to actually having something to say too. I think it's oh, a really absolutely. it's a really clever kind of really um nice. uh reflection of nineties masculinity, mm. I think. The, yeah, their one. their relationship, the yeah, relationship yeah. between all the men, all the the guys yep. in that, in, yep. uh, it's and what happens. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really interesting. That's good. Uh, the way it plays out. So that was my cross the street, Miss Tice. All right, man. Well, we're gonna we're gonna call it a night. I think that was it. That's our episode. Ladies yeah, and we did it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did it. Yay! Hey, so yeah. there's so many ways that people can find us, Nick. Why don't you rattle off a few for us? Sure, ladies and gentlemen, you can email us at uh, Nick Tice and Videotape at gmail dot com. You can find That's us. Correct. You can. <laughs> Okay, Tice. <laughs> you can find us uh, on Facebook. Yes, you uh, can. Just literally chuck in Nick Tice and it pops up. There. It does. Um, you can not tweet at us. You can follow us on Twitter, Tyson. That, is that what it is? Say it. You can follow us on Twitter at uh, Nick Tice Videotape. There's Great. no and in that one. Um, and apart from that... Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you can, can find you can. Uh, well, you can subs- listen to us on to iTunes. Us on iTunes, please subscribe, on... rate, and review. Please do. Uh, you can find us on Stitcher, tune in anywhere good podcasts are sold. Um, <laughs> I feel like that's what they every <laughs> ad used to say. Yeah. <laughs> you can find us in wherever good podcasts are sold. Yes. Yeah. Um, thanks again to Zach for yeah. our theme, what Jack champ, D for man. our artwork. And thanks to everyone who is taking the time to tweet us, tweet yes. at us. So you've got to stop right there, buddy. Just anyone who's taken the time to contact to us. To contact have, us, have us online. Online. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much, people. It's been wonderful. We love you heaps. And um, also keep your eye out for, um, we're going to be getting some, we're going to be putting our episodes on YouTube soon. Yay. So that's going to be exciting. So if yeah. you uh, don't like downloading podcasts any other way you yep. can always just listen to us through youtube so which that's going to be coming up soon which my brother does there you go dan we're doing yes. it for you so enjoy that and that'll open up the doors for all kinds of rude comments that's true from <laughs> strangers on youtube no we're not we're going to turn that off because that's an option <laughs> no man i'm leaving that <laughs> shit on are you serious i can't wait to hear someone i don't want anyone ba- anyway someone out of anywhere will just kind of make a comment about the female ghostbusters just for the shits and giggles Jesus of it they'll just start Christ. talking about no, it no don't you know do what'll that. happen i'm turning that off i have a half a say at least <laughs> um so next week tyson oh we've got an exciting one for you next week we do we're gonna we're gonna we've been we've been uh, a bit male oriented we're we've gonna, been looking at some big action movies it has it's been a bit it's, 80s it's been the we're still gonna do 80s but we're gonna literally flip the coin and we're gonna do uh dirty dancing we are we're gonna get a bit of swayze up in this joint beautiful swayze oh, yeah god I didn't and a that soundtrack guy. that is just fucking stellar yeah, it's funny how it's set in the 50s and it's such an 80s song at the end, isn't it? <laughs> well, don't ruin it now. <laughs> We've got to talk about it. Okay, people, that's it from us. Bye. 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 Bye.